Hey everybody, welcome back to the Goodest Cast. If it's your first time, hey, welcome. Happy to have you here. On this episode, we got Alexi Smith, aka Noriaro. And if you don't know who that is, man, he's a fucking legend. He's been providing us with drifting and Japanese car culture backstories and content for the last 20 years. He drifts himself. You know, it's always good to have an inside man who knows what they're doing. He's a commentator for D1 GP in English. And uh, man, the guy's just been around and has seen so much cool stuff and shared everything with us. And how can we not be appreciative? And uh, you guys bugged me to have him on. You bugged him to come on and get this guy. So I appreciate y'all. We finally did it. End of the year, last episode. We're gonna end it right and uh, lead us into 2023, man. We're gonna have some good, good episodes, good times. Keep it good, as you know. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoy this episode. I really enjoyed doing it. Alexi killed it. What else can I say? Check it out. To 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 tire streets. That's right. Another tire streets ad. And if you listen to the podcast, you know, you fucking know. The tire streets is where you get Accelerators. Accelerators 651s, like, to be exact. And if you want 20% off on those bad boys, goodest 651. 20% off. That's what we run all around. Front and rear. Sometimes 100 tread wear, sometimes 200 tread wear. Depends on how we're feeling. Depends on the, the outing, you know? Kind of environment, kind of vibe. <laughs> um. You can get other tires too. Goodest, goodest 15 gets you anything off tire streets. So you want tow rig tires, you want mud terrains, you want freaking tires for your side chicks. Fucking, she need two tires or something. I don't know. <laughs> what? Your side person? It's 2022, everybody. Uh, <laughs> tire streets, accelerators. Buy them, buy them, fucking buy them. <laughs> Man, I hope they don't listen to this. Well, I've uh, been meaning to do this one for a while. You get asked all the time to have you on. Oh, when you <laughs> do the, who do you want to see on next? And people mm. say, yeah. Yeah, I get like 20 of you. And then I'm like, all right, I can only respond to like one of these. <laughs> um. And I mean, naturally, like with the type of guests that we have on here, you would be an obvious choice. So, mm. well, thank you for having me on, and it finally lined up where we can do it. Yeah, um, I'm I'm actually really curious because I don't really know like your backstory about mm-hmm. how you got to Japan and like how how you like got into drifting in like you know far before any of us were even considering it. Like what? <laughs> Yeah, I can tell the I'll I'll give the the uh, compressed version of that story. So I mean, I was never really into car I mean, I was never into cars because I wasn't around them when mm. I was younger. Like none of my you know friends or family really had, you know, anything like a hot car or anything. I mean, I'd sort of seen photos of my you know, my grandmother had an RX3 uh, you know, RX, to go and see her relatives in the countryside. Uh, cause it was fast and could overtake trucks. And, um, you know, my dad had like a Lagonda back, you know, when he was 20 or something like these big, you know, this huge British looking car. And I just sort of seen vaguely that sort of thing, but I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, cars are cool, whatever. You know, and I'd see like a cool car drive past like, Oh, that's kind of cool. But I was never really like around them. And, um, like I remember one time I saw it was back in Australia, uh, we had the R32 GTR imported as part of a like homologation for them running at uh, Bathurst or the the touring car series back then. And there were like, there's 200 actual 200 GTRs, Australian delivered ones. It was the only outside of Japan uh, delivered there, as far as I know. And I remember seeing one once. I was like, what is that? That's so cool. I, I, like, I didn't know what it was. Uh, actually, I was, yeah, it was, I was like, a, I remember it was like a Sunday morning. And I was just out and I saw it like, wow, that's so cool. So there's always these little, you know, I just remember like, oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Uh, but I wasn't really around it. And then as I get older, you know, I was riding bicycles everywhere 
because I I just liked the you know, the freedom and speed side of it. And uh, you know, naturally, when I, you know, I got my license and cars, you know, driving my parents, you know, little Mazda three two three, you know, one point six liter automatic piece of junk. <laughs> and I, I can admit this now because I'm old enough. I the day I got my P plates, which is when in Australia when you're allowed allowed to drive by yourself. Um, I remember I did 140 kilometers an hour in a 60 zone. That's kilometer like kilometers an hour. Yeah, it was this big long straight road. I just wanted to see how fast the car would go. I was like looking back, it's like wow, I, I did that was the first day I was allowed behind the wheel, and I did that. And then like a, a little bit after that, you know, I I smashed a CV joint trying to do like a like a neutral to drive burnout, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to work all summer to to pay dad back for the. For the broken car, yeah, it was it was fun. I, he'd still let me drive it, but he's just like, he, I when I called him at two in the morning, he's like, "Yeah, you you wait there," and I just I had to sit there until six a.m. before a tow truck came, and like he, I think he waited on purpose to you know, not call the <laughs> tow truck to, so I could it could it could sink in. I could feel bad. Anyway, so I I turned uh, eighteen and got my full license. Then shortly after that. Uh, like I'd saved up some money and my parents said that if you get into university, we'll go halves with you on a car. And the university I got into was about like a 45 minute drive from the, my house. I was like, well, I need a car. And um, I ended up getting a RX-7, the SA-22C, like the first gen one cool. with a 12A. And uh, I bought it from like a, the, like a rotary shop in Sydney. Uh, and that was really cool. We we were just we went out to look at actually a Subaru Vortex. Uh, we went out to look at one. Well, I was looking at cars. I was like, well, I really like Su I like the WRX, you know, because I was yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they'd yeah. just come out like a couple of years before because like, it was the hot car. Like it was the vert car to have in in Sydney anyway. And they were like, oh well, this it's like a turbo four wheel drive sort of thing. We went out to look at one at this car yard, and it had sold before we got there. And it was it was one of those car yards like out in like an industrial area and. You know, there was a, a like a gorilla decoration like out one. front. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, not even no, it wasn't inflatable. It was like it was like a stuffed thing. You know, it was like monster deals. So it's like one of those places. <laughs> and I'm looking back. I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't buy a car from from the gorilla place. Yeah. Um, and as we were driving back home, we we drove past this place called Rick Shaw Rotary because the guy's name's Richard Shaw. So Rick Shaw and Whoa. saw it there. And, Oh, it was like, you know, glow. It was like, like in a movie, you know, it was like glowing in the light next to the road and this nice, you know, blue color, the the metallic blue that they came in. And we called the next morning and said, oh, because I'd met Rick before a couple of times. And I said, was that car for sale? He goes, oh, we're just changing it from automatic to manual now. You got to come in and have a look at it. So I went out a look and like there'd already been like three people through to look at it. I was like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll buy it. So I bought that. And um, so our, that that gen of RX seven not good for drifting because no. it's uh it's got like recirculating ball steering and uh the, like the suspension is just not good for drifting. I could probably drift one now, but and it was like open diff or I don't know, I don't know, I don't yeah. know diff. What I don't know what you yeah. need. So I got that and just did all the basic maintenance stuff on it. Like I didn't really modify it. Uh, just got like you know coney suspension and just all the standard you know some like all the <clears throat> the brake pads that are a little bit better yeah. just that sort of stuff and i'd go to i remember thinking like my my dad saying to me like what do you want to do uh because I, I just sort of graduated from school i was going to university i didn't really know what to do and i, I was i don't know what, what i want to do he's like well what do you want to do like with, with like i was like well i like cars and that sort of stuff i just want to like go to the track and like hang around with friends and just drive Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is hey. sort of how it turned out yeah, yeah so I'd, I'd go to uh, track that. days yeah right well I'd go to track days with that and it would be like you know the, the Mazda MX-5 240Z combined track day sort of thing and it was the, that really boring sort of thing where you know it's all you know retired men uh, try, you know, doing regularities which is where you try and do like, you know, five laps in a row with getting close to the same time every time. And mm. it was, it was good because it's just, you know, it was just driving around, but I found it, so, it was really boring. Like I liked it when, you know, I'd go into the corner a little bit too hot and the back would kind of step out. 
uh, breaking total. Oh, oh, yeah. And then, you know, I'd get an earful. I'd come back in like, don't do that. You're not supposed to do that. And I was like, but I like, it's fun. I like doing that. Um, and then one fateful night, uh, we had this thing in Australia called uh, Auto Salon. So Auto Salon was... <clears throat> It was a show series, like a show car series. Like I didn't, you know, like hot import nights or whatever you had in the U- yeah. USA, like the tune, yeah, tuning cars. Uh, it was started by these um, Indonesian high school students uh, who had like a car club, and they wanted to make like a car show. So they named it after the Tokyo Auto Salon. They just called it Auto Salon. And um, you know, it was this all these what was popular back then, which is uh, now known as sex spec. Mm. Uh, which is popular in Sydney, uh, you know, like bright paint, uh, dinner plate, chrome wheels, uh, airbrushing with, you know, drag, not dragons, like, you know, crocodiles and tigers. Mm-hmm. And it's all like, you know, Momo wheels and uh, Zepters, like the wheels and stuff like that. It was, <laughs> I was, uh, we didn't, I didn't know any better. I thought, yeah, it was cool. You know, stereos and all that sort of stuff. Like I didn't, I, it was fun to be around, but I didn't, vibe with it i just didn't like it it's like what's the point of this stuff it's like you can't it's like there's a fiberglass you know interior in the car like if you if, <laughs> if, if you go around a corner that's gonna like break or, and like warp i don't know anyway <laughs> so i'd go to it i'd go to the shows and um my best at the time my best friend's cousin was an importer for mtx audio and he had this audio car it was a uh, like on a it was based on a uh hyundai Lantra wagon of all things. And uh he had that car in the show. And um <clears throat> we got to the show to set up. I was, we were just sort of tagging along to help him set up. And he was like, Oh, I forgot my um my mobile phone. No, my bat I need my spare battery for my mobile phone. <laughs> <Did he have laughs> like, what year, what year is this? Like this is a long time ago. So he said because he, he needed it, like his phone was flat and he needed his phone. So he said, can you go back, can you two go back to my house and get the phone? Um, so we get there, or the, the battery. So we get there, his wife was just leaving. So she locked the deadbolt on the, the door and she said, when, when you leave, just pull it shut and lock it because she didn't want to leave the keys. Because um, she was literally just walking out the door So as we were going in to find it. So we went in and we go, okay, let's leave. And the the deadbolt had like popped out too far and we couldn't close the door. It was that design. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So we couldn't close the door because the deadbolt had popped out too far and we couldn't like, because it was locked, you couldn't like click it to get it back in. Mm. So we're like, well, what do, well, shit, what do we do now? So my mate is trying to like think of his cousin's friend's phone number so he can call him and let him know that we're not coming or we have to, someone has to come back and get us. Um, and we're at this house. I was like, I don't know, what do we do? And I knew that he had a big collection of uh, VHS tapes he'd bought from overseas because mm. he'd been to Japan a couple of times to do Japan stuff. And um, so we've got in contact with him. Oh, oh Uncle Craig, you know, um, sorry, we the deadbolt. He's like, oh, all right, fine, I'll come back. It was like half an hour away. So he came as he was coming back. Uh, my, co- my friend said, oh, let's have a look at some of these videos he's got. Like, yeah. So we have a look at them, like option, whatever. I was like, oh, I've heard of these things before. And I found this one. It was all written, it was all Japanese. And it had like, you know, a car drifting at night on the cover. It's like, oh, this is one of those, like, this is like street drifting. Oh, awesome. So we put it in the machine. We played half of it by the time he got back. And uh, he came back. He sort of ran, okay, let's go. And I said, can I borrow this? He's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So I, I ejected the tape, put it in my pocket because we had big jeans back then. And <laughs> we went back to the show. But the whole time I'm thinking this whole time, like I want to get home and watch this t- the rest of this tape. So we get home really late at night, like 11 o'clock at night. And I watched the tape back to back about three times. Again, it was one of those, um, it was called Auto Vision. You can find them on YouTube now, like the Auto Vision drifting. It's all, all like, you ever seen those drifting videos where it's like, it has some street drifting and there's some guy just like talking the whole time. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, though, it's that. That's the series. It's a guy called Mr. K from Shine Racing. And um, I was like, this, this is what I want. I want. This is what I wanted to do this whole time. This. So got more and more and more into it. 
there was uh, an, uh, a Japanese bookstore in Sydney because uh, there's a lot of Japanese people living in, in Sydney. Yeah. And I'd go there and sort of beg them to order, you know, Drift Tengoku magazine. Because, like, a friend of my father's had he knew I was into cars, who a, a Japanese guy. And for my birthday, he sent me like a stack of magazines, you know, like Option and like some dress up car stuff and VIP, whatever. And then Drift Tengoku. And that was, you know, it was like pink and yellow, all this crazy designs. So I was like, wow. Like, the, it, was, it was like finding the Mr. Sparkle box <laughs> in The Simpsons. Yeah. Mr. Spakuru is like, whoa, look at this crazy shit. Yeah, well, I, th- I love this. I just vibed with it so much. I thought, yeah. yeah, this, this is it. This is what I've been looking for this whole time. So I found that. Uh, I begged them, like, please just order a copy for me. Like, oh, it's going to cost like more because we don't have to order one. I was like, yeah, I don't, I'll pay whatever. It would cost like, you know, $30 an issue, but I didn't care. And I'd get them to order like Drift uh, Tengoku DVDs. You know, I'd, I'd just sit there and study them and oh, I'd watch them and, yeah. So eventually uh <clears throat> I had a I got a decent job doing 3D graphics and animation uh at a TV <laughs> station in Sydney. And back then it paid really good. It just like I'd st- I'd studied it. Uh and at that point it was a good job to have because not many people could do it. Um and I was you know I was like 22 or something and I had no life like I just I just go to work and just do a lot of work. I'd go home and you know, I, I didn't mind like just grinding at it. It was good and it yeah. paid good. So I saved up some money and bought a 180SX, oh. uh, an import one from Japan. And it was pretty close to stock apart from like a cat back and like a, a turbo time. And that's it. It was apart from that, it was dead stock. And, you know, I found a, a workshop that was sort of, it was called uh, Advan Racing in, uh, in Sydney. And, um, you know, I got them to do like a an R thirty three brake conversion. I got I bought like an exhaust and air filter and you know a little uh the little boost controller where it's like a little tap, you know, you just you turn the knob a little bit. Just it's mm-hmm. like an inline boost controller, like <laughs> janky sort of stuff like that. And um yeah, you know, drove it around. I'd sort of try and get it sideways here and there in the rain and okay, I need to buy an, an LSD next. And I, I want an LSD. That was, the, that was the next thing I was gonna ask. Like Yeah. Well I I figured out that it didn't really work. And I, I was watching all, you know, like the the Nomican things about all, the, like the Nomican how to drift. Like, okay, you need LSD. I was like, okay, I need one of these. So I went to the Advan. I'm like, Peter, I need an LSD. He's like, I don't think you want one of those because they they'll make the car really hard to drive. You know, because like, yeah, 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 yeah. Then, <laughs> I'll make the car hard to drive. It's like, no, 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 no. I want to drift it. Like, I want to drift it properly. I want that. He's like, all right, if you're sure, you, you got to pay up front because he was worried I'd like hate it. That's yeah. how long ago this was. <laughs> uh, yeah, he didn't want to do. It. He didn't want to do it, but I got him to do it, and yeah, it worked out fine. You know, I, I was doing, you know, driving in circles to wear it in and all that sort of stuff, like everyone did back then. Change the oil, and um, yeah, eventually, I sort of figured out. Okay, uh, I'm probably going to crash, and there was a. You know, I need to somehow go to the track again. So I go to the track to the like what I used to go to these uh, like grip sort of grip days. And I get yelled at, you're coming out of the last corner onto the front straight, just get a bit so just like that. Like, yeah, this is cool. And <laughs> you know, again, the flag marshals are like, you don't do that, it's dangerous. All right. All right, this sucks. We gotta we gotta work something out. And at that point, there was a forum called uh nissensylvia.com. I don't know, it might still probably I don't think it exists anymore. Like that was the the Japanese car forum in Australia at that time. Like every mm. day I just get on there and have a look at it. And they had a drifting section. <clears throat> and you know, there were some people who were sort of getting together, like, oh, we need to like we need, we want to like try and run a track day or something. And there'd been like a couple of random track days that were run by uh like a race car driver who was friends with a guy who was sort of he liked drifting. So he sort of begr- begrudgingly did like drift track days. It's like, I don't know what you guys see. Like, he was one of these people where, you know, well, back in my day, you know, we used to, you know, when we used to race Valiance, we just called that, you know, just racing. The car would, the back would step out, but you try not to do it. But I don't know why you guys like doing this. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but he still, he ran, we ran like, he ran like two of these days and I, I went to both of them. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is great. I'd meet other people and stuff. So this club started up in Sydney and, you know, we, we'd go on the skid pan at, at, 
Eastern Creek and uh, this small uh, track called, we called it the Peanut. It was like sort of a figure eight shape, like joined in the mm. middle. It was, meant, it was meant to be like a driver training sort of skid track because it had like, you could, they could wet it down. Um, and we did like a, we'd get a group, we had a group of people in this club, which is like an official cams club. It was a proper motorsports club. So we had all the insurance and stuff like that. We could go to a nice. track and go, look, we're official. Uh, at first I was only like, just a member. I was one of the first like 20 members or something. But then after a while I became involved in the actual running of it. Um, and um, we just sort of did it more and more. You know, we'd, we'd meet up and, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, go to track days, try and figure out what, what we're doing. You know, we'd, we'd start by everyone would line up and like the run up would only be like first, second gear and make sure the track was clear before the next car. Cause we we're all absolute beginners. We had no idea what we were doing. And this um, is like the origins of drifting in Sydney pretty much. In pretty, well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, it was a club called Initial Drift. I had, I didn't have anything to do with the naming of it. I wouldn't have named it. But <laughs> yeah, uh, and it, you know, it got to the point where we were running a, a track day at least once a month at this uh, circuit called Oran Park, which doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it's now a housing, and we had, there was like a a short course where they could split it into two, like a the GP and then like the north and south. The north was quite short and it had good you know the spectators could view it quite easily and it had a big open pit area it was just easy to drive on it wasn't too hard on the cars so we were driving there a lot the management there was very friendly and helpful uh because we were trying to do it well and um i just enjoyed just going to the track and driving with my expanding group of friends you know, we'd get people because we were quite, you know, running these regularly. We'd get people coming down from Queensland, like just to drive it our days. Um, wow. Yeah, and you know, again, you, know, you start to meet more people, and it's like, oh, everyone's everyone's really cool. I mean, it, it it's different to how it is now. I think where back then we we're all we were all very like hyper competitive with each other because we were all mm. so mm. close in level, and we were it, we were. Super hyper competitive, but at the same time, like as soon as someone got better at something, we'd all be like, "Oh, cool, okay, we can do that now." Like now, these days, it's a lot easier, I think, because people it's like monkey see, monkey do. You can just watch really good drifting, and I guess go just it. yeah, go and do it, and it would be it's a lot easier now. Whereas back then, we we're just sort of copying each other and just what we saw on videos uh, to to learn how to drift. So. Uh, so that was going for a while. That was going good. I never really got into like, comp I mean, I, I entered comps, but I was not really into it. Like, I didn't want to spend all that money. I'd see all the money people were spending. I was like, I don't want to spend that much money on, on this. It's like, it's fine. Yeah. I, and I was getting compliments like, oh, what if you, oh, what, what turbos on it? Oh, it's just the, it's the stock T20, T25, like T28. Yeah. Or, or, or like the, the biggest turbo I have was like an S15. It was like an S15 turbo, just a stock one. And people like, oh, what? Huh, what? what you, you're driving so fast. I was like, I don't know. Just, I, I like to, because people go through like all these tires and stuff. I, like, I don't want to spend all that money. Come on. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> yeah, keep it simple. Um, yeah, I, I just always like to keep it simple. And um, oh, yeah, I entered comps every now and again. I think I got a couple of you know placements every now and again, but it didn't really excite me that much. Because uh, what excited me was J Japan and all the stuff I'd seen on the videos. I was like, I want to go there. I want to go and see that. I want to do this. This is that's so cool. So uh, then, by that point, um, I'd been involved with the, that sort of scene. And you know, you the magazines come out, and I sort of I've met a couple of you know, magazine people and. Uh, yeah, it was only small. It's only Sydney, so sort of everyone sort of know, you, at least you know someone who knows everybody else. And uh, I thought, okay, I want to go to Japan because back then I was also I was also into anime and stuff like that, like the, <laughs> the standard weeaboo sort of stuff. And um, I was watching a lot of anime and stuff like that, but I was also watching the Japanese drifting. And I was like, well, I, I should just go on holiday. And I couldn't yeah. find anyone to go with me because I was like, I want to do this and this, and no one wants to do both. 
and everyone's be like, no, no, Japan. It's like, it was because, you know, it, it's not really accessible back then like it is now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I can imagine. Like, for example, so I, I looked up, I figured out, I don't know how, I guess I bought like option magazines and I saw the, the list of days for like D1 Grand Prix. I was like, I want to go to D1 Grand Prix. So I found the one for Ebisu. And uh, I asked a, a friend, like my, I, actually, it was the guy who I was talking about before, the, the MTX audio guy. Yeah. He was friends with the editor of a magazine, HPI magazine, High Performance Imports. So I said, oh, Uncle Craig, can you ask, can I get Ben's email from you? And he's like, yeah. So I emailed this guy, the editor of this magazine, Ben Ellis. And uh, I said to him, oh, hey, I, I'm trying to go to Ebisu Circuit. How do I get there? <laughs> like, how do I actually, how do I get there? Like, I know, I know I've got to go to, like, I've got to go to Fukushima. I've got a hotel in Fukushima, but, but I don't know how to get to the actual track. And he said, oh, just get on the train, get off at Nihomatsu Station, get in a taxi, and just, just say, like, Ebisu Circuit, and they'll know. So, uh, okay, all right, sure. And he said, oh, wait, you're actually, you're gonna, you're actually going? I was like, yeah. He said, can you take some photos and, like, write an article about it for me, like, when you go there for the magazine? Uh, yeah, sure, okay. So I had a little digital camera with a, a tiny, like, 32 megabyte uh, <laughs> you know, cut. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, I had to delete. I, I remember deleting photos on the on the way, like on the trip, going, "Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that." So I, I could only, oh, yeah, I had one card. Pictures. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, basically. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh man, that's a. It's a shame I, I did delete photos. Yeah, that's how it was. So I went to, you know, I went there, and I was like, okay, it's it's on. There's practice and then the actual comp. So I went for both days. And um, oh wait, did I? No, no. No, I went on. No, I only went for one day. I got there really early and I got the taxi to uh, the place. And I'm like, why is there a lion's head? <laughs> what is the. Kore wa ebisu sakito desu ka? So he's like, yeah, that's it. I'm like, okay, so I get out and I just walk up to the front gate, and then someone comes out. They're like, "What? What? What do you want?" I'm like, "Oh, um, uh, D D one mini kimasta." They're like, "What? Oh, okay. Um, do you want to do you want to lift? Like, do you want to lift up to the top?" I was like, "Um, yeah." I mean, I had no idea. Actually, it was yeah. like a regular racetrack. We just walk in the front gate, and it's like a regular venue. Yeah. So the guy gave me a lift, like all the way to the top. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm glad that I you gave me a lift. And uh, I get to the front gate and I walk up. I'm like, um, I don't know, ticket. And they're like, yeah, just general entry. Because I didn't know you had to like book tickets. Uh, so I just only had general entry. So I get in and all of a sudden it's like, oh, ah, like every, it's all there. Everything's there. All, it's just like, oh, this is, this is it. It's all there. There's the guy, the guy on the video. It's like, it, holy shit, it's Taniguchi. Ah, ah. like, you know, all, all the, all the people that I was like idolizing and studying back then. We're just here. Like, I, I'd already met Tezuka actually by that point because mm. uh, he, he'd come to Australia. And um, I, I saw him there. I was like, oh, I don't want to bother him. Looking back, that was stupid. I should have just gone up and said hi. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, getting photo, I'm getting photos with Taniguchi and, and, and uh, Kazama and all these people. And they're just so nice and friendly and accessible. And it's, it's not like a, like a race event, you know, like, a, like an actual race event where it's all closed off. No, you can't come in the pits. And it's just everyone's cool and friendly and nice. And the cars are amazing. And I'm taking all these photos and losing you know, my mind. And um, I, it's in the middle of summer, so it's stinking hot. I had no sunscreen. Um, I didn't have any water or anything on me. I'm like dying of dehydration. I'm trying to like buy like Picari from the machine and um, <laughs> yeah, it's like super humid. Yeah, yeah. It was it was disgusting. And I ended up because I didn't I didn't have a ticket, I had the watch from you've been to Ebisu? Yeah. Okay. I had I had the watch from the pit exit of Minami. Oh interesting. Uh, so I was standing, you can actually see I had a big I have a white cap. You can see me on the video. Uh, I bought a blitz, like a Nomican Blitz cap. And you can see, like, I can only see, like, as they, the main corner, like, I can't see the front straight or anything. But even then, it's like, they're pretty close. And I was blown away by how cool this was. And um, so then at the, the day ends, 
And I'm like trying to walk back. I'm like, well, how am I going to get back? Okay, I got to just walk back to the front gate. So I walk all the way to the top and then all the way back down. About halfway, I bought this like, uh, like Calpis. I didn't know what it was. It was it's, a, it's the biggest can in the machine. It's like that sort of a, you know, milk, milk soda sort of drink. <laughs> and it was, I'm drinking it. It's like, you know, it's like the, the Anchorman thing. The oh, milk was a bad choice. So, <laughs> I was dying. I was sunburned and everything. But I was like, that was the best thing. That was the best thing ever. I want to do that again more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I did other sort of car stuff that trip, just sort of what I what I could try and figure out. Like I visited, you know, Top Secret and Smokey came out. No way. I walked like I walked up to the verge, like because uh, I, you know, I know as you know, you're not supposed to walk into a workshop. You're, you know, you can walk up to yeah. the door. Yeah. I mean, that's any country. You know, you never walk into a workshop. So I was like, okay, well, I don't want to piss anyone off. I walk up to the to the door and I look in. It's like, oh, there's that GT500 looking Supra with the 3S turbo. I was like, oh, there's that. I've seen that car before. And this door opens. This guy walks out towards me. I was like, oh, shit, I got to try and speak Japanese now. Oh, it's smoky. Oh, my God. What do I do? Ah. And he kind of walks up. He's like, can I, can I help you? He's like, oh, um, uh, uh, D, D1 mini kimashita. Like, you know, I came to watch D1. Like, uh, <laughs> Mickey gambatte, like the, you know, Mickey, the Mickey Ryuji, the driver. He's like, he's like, oh, okay, cool. I was like, uh, Shashin Daijobu. He's like, mm, Daijobu. So I just took some photos and, and he just walked off and just continued doing, doing what he was doing. I was like, wow, this is, this is better than I thought it would be. Yeah. Hanging out uh, with so international that whole criminals. What's that? Hanging out with international criminals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, just, it was, it was just amazing. So I get back and it's just the seed has been planted. So the whole time I'm like, I want to go back. 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 And, um, so I'd been doing sort of 3D graphics and stuff like that. Got kind of burned out on it because it's quite l difficult to do for, you know. And I thought, okay, I want to do something else. And it just happened at just that time. Uh, the people from the magazine said, oh, would you like to come and like be on a video? I was like, all right. So I was on a video. I was on like a, a video. Uh, I did a voiceover for like HPI video and stuff like that. So I guess I was kind of destined to fall into doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> And um, I ended up working for the magazine. And what we do was, so this is like early 2000s. So the internet is still not really that much of a thing as it is now. So what we do, what they do was uh, I, went to, I went to Japan with them to shoot a video, uh, which they then sell as like an actual, like, you know, like all those old back then, like Mischief and um, yeah. what, were the, what were the drifting ones in America? There were those... You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. I can't, it doesn't come to Th Those, mind. like, that's how it was back then. It was all like sort of amateur shot, you know, stuff that was, uh, and they'd make videos, DVDs out of it. Um, it was like that, it was that, that sort of thing. And at the same, you know, doing that, I was like, wow, this is so much fun. I'm getting paid to do this and just go places and do all this stuff. And after a while, what I'd do was I'd go on holiday to Japan for like a week and I'd go around to workshops and events and whatever, which is what I'd sort of want to do anyway. And I'd take photos and I'd find feature cars to you know, write little features on and I'd go back and then sell that on the side to the magazine. It's like a sort of a, uh, I'd actually use a pseudonym that wasn't my actual name. It was like a sort of a Japanese sounding name. Because I was not directly, you know, I was kind of selling it on the side. Like they, they were fine with it, but it, because I was like, I was working for the magazine, but I was also like a, uh, like a freelancer on the side. Uh, clever. Yeah. Uh, and um, I got paid to go on holidays to Japan and yeah. doing what I wanted to do. I thought, this is great. And then, I went and worked for another magazine. Actually, it was uh, Auto Salon Magazine, which is the, the magazine which sprung out of that show series. Uh, that, there's a whole extra story about that, but never mind that. And um, it got to the point where I thought, okay, I'm coming up to, I was like 28. I thought, okay, Australians can get a working holiday visa to Japan for up to 18 months. So you can live in Japan for 18 months, just no questions asked, basically. You don't have to work if you don't want to, but you can work like part-time. 
uh, just to make money. The idea is, you know, you're meant to like do like English teaching and that sort of stuff, a culture exchange sort of thing. And uh, I thought, okay, sort of now or never. And I can, I know I can support myself just by having fun, by going over, you know, having fun going over there and just doing what I did before. And uh, at that time, Top Gear Australia had, was about to start. Like the, there was an Australian, you know, there's like a, I don't know what there is now. There's a, there was, there was an Australian version. There was a, like a Korean version. And no, oh, there's the American version as well, right? The American yeah. Top Gear. Yeah, right. Yeah. With, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. The same thing with the Australian one. Uh, I, I saw that there was an ad like, you want to be the next Clarkson? You know, sign up, uh, send in your, in, your, your interview tape uh, to be on Top Gear Australia. I was like, all right, <laughs> sure. That'd be cool. <laughs> So I made this video and, you know, I included a video of me drifting to show I could drive. And I'm like, hi, I'm Alexi Smith and I love cars and blah, blah, blah. And Do you still yeah, I went like, I f- No, I don't. I wish I did. It, oh, I might yeah. have it on a VHS tape, like in my parents' garage. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, like, I don't have the original files for it. Believe like, me, if I did, they'd already, it would definitely be on my Instagram by now. <laughs> There's like some uh, studio backlot like storage unit that has this video. Let me, yeah, let me uh, it probably yeah. I, I got to be. I got like a. Actually, no. I, I probably don't have it anymore. Even if it did exist, it probably doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, I, I don't know. It may exist in a vault, some like in the Indiana Jones vault somewhere. <laughs> or something. I don't know. Yeah. So I I did that, and then um, I thought, okay, it can go one of. Like, I guess two ways right now, either like if I get that job, I'll do that. If I don't get that job, I'll go to Japan. I'll quit the magazine and go to Japan. And, uh, I actually got to the top 20 people interviewed for that. No way. The top, yeah. It was, it was a bit of a spin out. Uh, but I, I mean, I was, a completely, I mean, I, I look at videos of me talking on camera back then that like that were shot at similar sort of time. I was terrible. Like I was nowhere as I mean, even now I'm like not that great. I'm not like a professional announce, you know, presenter. I've never done any training or anything. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just sort of like, Oh, well when I edit the video, I'm like, yeah, when I say that, that's kind of annoying. So I won't say that anymore. Like that's the extent <laughs> of what I do. <laughs> so, in company, I know exactly how that goes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, uh, that I went in for the interview. I didn't, uh, you know, they said, oh, we're not going to go with you. Okay. And Top Gear Australia just, it didn't really go that well anyway. Like nobody really liked it, which is, you know, the, the whole idea with Top Gear was the, it was the fact that it was those three guys, you know, Clarkson and May and yeah. they were fun. So that's why it did, didn't work. So, that, okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go to Japan. So I sold my car, my, like my daily and my, and my 180SX. Okay. I'm going to have a bunch of cash. Just for now, I'll go live there for a year and just have fun. I'll go and do track days and meet all the people I want to meet and just do all this, like do all the stuff that I wanted to do. Like I'll go to these places and see all this stuff and whatever. Uh, so I signed up for the working holiday visa, came over. Uh, luckily, because I'd been like four or five times before that, uh, I'd made a bunch of contacts and I was able to get set up pretty easily, uh, like a, a room to stay in and all, and help to you know when i was setting up and that sort of stuff and just as i arrived the gfc happened the the global financial crisis happened so the australian dollar and the japanese yen just went like that so all the savings i had in my bank account were literally just went half what they're worth you can look at the graph like when i arrive in like november and then after that just goes and every day I'd get up and I'd open my laptop and look at the exchange rate and go, <sighs> okay, I better hurry up and buy some car or, or, or I better do something. Oh, uh, and I, I dreamed of like getting a, a JZX 100 because that was the, like my daily back in Australia was a, a, a like a Cressida, like an 80, like a MX 83 Cressida because mm. I wanted a big Toyota. I was like, yeah, that was, that was good enough. Yeah, I'm going to buy JZX, JZX, JZX. No, we're going to buy an R32 GDST instead because <laughs> it was like a third of the price. Uh, unf- yeah, so I bought that and um, just went to track days. And that, it was only like just my, it was like the, you know, seat, steering wheel, coilovers. 
arms, diff, that's it. Like it was a typical sort of, you know, beginner car. I mean, it wasn't really a beginner as such, but well, that's a funny thing though. That was one of the things that attracted me to Japan too, is I'd go over there and, you know, they'd say, oh, Alexi, you've been drifting for a while. I'm like, <laughs> like five years. <laughs> I mean, not like that, obviously, but back then, yeah, you know, I was, I was one of the sort of first generation Australian drivers back then. Mm-hmm. Like the first, first wave, let's say. Yeah. So I've been drifting the longest, one of the, you know, one of the first waves in Australia Whereas in Japan. It's like, you're, you're, you're nobody. You're no big deal at all. Like nobody, what, who, huh? Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Cause it's all, I'd go to Nikko and there's like, oh, there's Fukuda. There's, there's Kogachi, like all the people, you know, there's, um, uh, Oba, uh, Ohara, o- Obara from, you know, Wins Auto. And they're all like shredding. So I like that because then I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm in the big, I'm in the deep end of the pool now yeah. and I can drive with these guys and I can learn with them. And, you know, it, it, you, you drive and then they, they, oh, can you give me some advice? Like what I'm doing? They're like, oh, you know, you're doing good, which means like, you suck. I don't want to say anything bad. <laughs> that, yeah, that's what that means. Like, that's damn, the thing. It's damn. like, it's the same with Japanese. Like when you get, you, you try and speak Japanese and they go, oh, Nihongo this, ne? like they say, oh, you're really good at Japanese. It means you're, it means good for you for trying. You're, you're trying, you're trying hard. Good. Uh, they won't, <laughs> they won't encourage you at all until you actually do it. And mm-hmm. I, I, I remember one time it, it's, it's the same as the, it's like all those movies, like the stereotypes where it's like, you know, uh, you, you won't, they won't say like, like, you know, like blood sport or something where, you know, the training sequence and you're just getting beat down. And then eventually you, you, they'll block the master's punch and they're like, they're like, like that. You know, <laughs> yeah. You just get the nod or the, or like the smallest amount of the, like, and that's huge. Like, yes, yes. Or like you do, you drive and then you come back in. And then they'll they'll someone will say like, oh yeah, that was pretty good. Like, oh, nice. Oh, yeah. And then from and th- from then on, they start talking shit on you, Alexi. <laughs> you start, you're you're entering way. What the fuck are you doing? You're entering way too late. You need to enter like ten meters back. That's you, that's why you keep running off. What what are you doing? Like yeah, and it just it completely flips. Yeah. So I, I like that. I, I like the fact that not, I mean not obviously not being you know. Oh, not not like you're being talked shit to, but the fact that you there there is definitely a, a um the meritocracy line is very obvious. Yeah, uh, yeah. But also at the same time, people don't have an ego. Nobody has an ego about it. Like the top guys don't have. Well, I mean, the majority anyway. You know, it's like the top guys don't have an ego because you know they know that there's other guys who are just as good as them who can, who can destroy them, and the guys who are below are like, well, they're better than me, so I'm not going to like talk. I'm not going to be like talk talk up myself because there's better people than me, and it's all kind of like that. It, there's a hierarchy, but there's still, uh, it's still very good. It's good in that way. I don't know how to sort of say it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm sure you've, yeah. you've yeah, had the same very, sort like, of feeling about it's flat. Like there's like respect, but it's not like yeah. There's, there, it's not like a you know. I don't know. I know what you're saying. You know, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I I like that that sort of thing where it, it, everything is sort of like obvious, like it's all laid out. Like you don't have to think about it or anything. It's like, yeah, well, he's better than him. I'm better than that guy, but he's better than me, so I'm not going to say anything. Like, yeah, it, it was good in that way. And you get you get over that barrier of them seeing that you're serious about it and that you're trying to get better and you're 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 improving. And that that's a, a really big thing in Japan too, is where if they see that you're making an effort and that you're serious, uh, you have to sort of hang around for a while until they see that you're actually serious about things. And then they'll actually really help you. Like if you just sort of come in half assed and, um, oh yeah, like, or if you think you're good when you're not, they, they'll just be like, you know, whatever. But then if you complete, if you just humble yourself and, try or eat and and like tr- just grind at like one thing like trying to grind at like the first corner in some track like just grinding at something and they'll actually come over and give you advice uh yeah like w- when they see you doing that anyway so i i just i enjoyed the atmosphere yeah. uh, I, I improved a lot um you know i get to drive with the people that uh you know I, i'd say to someone yeah and he, eventually one day it's like you'll be out on the track and then you know, like Wakamatsu will come up behind, you know, like Wakamatsu from 
uh, he was like an he's an old school D1 driver, mm. and he'd like he he'd come up behind you, and flash his lights at you like, oh yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, he he trusts me now, you know. Yeah. And, and we just we shred together. I mean, it, half of it's like practice for them. Too. On the other, the flip side of that though is like people like Daigo who just bully you for the, for their own practice. Like you'd be I out some, there. And, I have some friends like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that's fine too. I, that, I, I, I can. That's uh, you know, that's that's like guts training for you as well. Like you, yeah, you know, all good. of a sudden, some guy behind you. Like uh, <laughs> there's this one track that I went to. It was not very, not really that busy. It was a Winds Auto Day. I was like on a, on a Wednesday, and I turn up in my JZX, and Daigo was there. And this is sort of when Daigo was on his big come up, mm. and he had his, he was like shredding with his missile like constantly. I it, it got to a point like every time I, I went to Ebisu, Daigo was there for some reason. Like he was there just practicing. And I, I rock up and he's like, Oh, Alexi, what, what class are you in? I'm like, Oh, I'm like, like expert two. He's like, Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive with you. What? Why? What? Like, oh, there's, no, there's no one else here like that I can drive with, which is like the longest sentence I've ever heard Daigo say ever. And I'm like, Wait, it's. N- it's not a missile. My car's not a missile. He's like, I won't hit you. <laughs> and he just walks off. <laughs> it's like, oh God. So I go out the track and he I pull her, I come around the track. This is at Nico, and he's waiting for me there on the back straight. And it just pulls him behind me, like, oh God, dude. I was just trying to have a chill day. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. And he's like just uh, dooring me the whole way. Like he wasn't, but he never touched me. Yeah. And he's like, on my door constantly. I'm like, this, but at the same time, I'm like, this is awesome trading because I'm I'm terrified right now. And he's like right there in my like right up in my face on every corner. And I saw him do the same thing to like other people there, and they'd immediately like just run Spin. off the track. Yeah. Yeah. Pull off the yeah. Track. yeah. Yeah. And it the, definitely that, it takes some getting used to to have somebody right there and yeah, not think but, about it. Well, that, actually, that, no, was, I don't run a rear view mirror in my car. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a good idea yeah but that that just all that sort of stuff that whole atmosphere of 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 it being very hardcore and no you know n- no quarter given uh i just enjoy yeah. i enjoyed that how uh, long, how uh, long did it take immensely. for you to break through to the to the point where you were actually getting shit talked on instead of them just saying patronizing oh. you telling you you're doing great it, de- it depends on the driver but like, it de- i mean it depends on the people like if like at first I was going to Nico circuit all the time. So I started mm. to get to know the Nico people, the Nico crowd f- f- earlier. And um, I don't know, like a year or so. Because I mean, here's the yeah. thing too. This is the, the, like this is something I actually one of my friends told me when I arrived here. The, they said um, like when you, because you're a foreigner, and this is something I, I understand now after being here for a while, is I know like from the time I arrived in Japan until now, I don't think there's, there's maybe no, I don't know any foreigners that I'd met back then that I still know now. They all either left or like they're in the military and they've gone somewhere else or something like that, or they live somewhere else now. Like it, it's, it's very common for foreigners to not be around for that long back then. Anyway, it's a bit different now. And, yeah. um, so as a result, Japanese people, Japanese people don't want to just invest in a friendship with you. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the the especially the people in like in Tokyo. It's a bit different in, in Kansai as well. So if you talk to someone from Kansai, you, you'll get a different sort of response. But it's kind of similar in the way. Yeah, like, they've been pretty welcoming to us when we go. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. It's like, but they they know that you're just there as a visitor, so they want to make you welcome and have fun. Right. Yeah, it's different. But it's different. they. Yeah, it's different. Like if you live here and then they don't want to become friends with you because they know you're just going to leave and it's like time it's like a it sounds kind of weird but it's like time invested sort of wasted and on yeah. Uh, unless they're like they they feel comfortable around foreigners, which some Japanese people are like that. Um but all, all the ones I wanted to do stuff with weren't that type of person, so <laughs> it was hard. Um and but once you have been here for long enough and you're just part of the scene you're like again a friend of mine said like i was just saying before a friend of mine said to me when you go to the track in the morning just walk around the pits and say good morning to everybody even if they don't say anything back just say morning cool. morning morning morning, cool. morning morning and then eventually they'll start saying they'll stay they'll say it back 
And then eventually they'll come up to you, which is sort of what happens. Like I'd turn up, I'd be there and they walk past, oh, Lexi, oh, you're here, you're here today. Yeah. Uh, th- like the first time guys like, you know, Kogachi and stuff like that, like, oh, Lexi, hey, how are you doing? I was like, <gasps> yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 That, was, that was amazing. Just, just getting involved in that way and, 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 and building it up. So once they see that you're serious, that's when they'll, they'll, they'll give you more of their time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of, it's like, uh, I just enjoyed the cutthroat atmosphere of it uh, and the, uh, the high level of everything and the no excuses about anything. Cause like there's a, there's a phrase in Japanese, uh, otoko wa damatte, which means men shut up, like don't make excuses. Yeah. And this is, I need to live uh, by that. <laughs> well, he, see, this is a difficult thing. This is a cultural thing where, like I've, I've sort of had to ex- explain this both ways and I've come to an understanding and it's still hard to get around this. Uh, any, anyone who's lived in Japan will understand this where like, for example, I'll give the example is if you like in school, if you were, were late to class, like what does the teacher say to you? Hmm. What does the teacher say to you? Like you, you show up late. What does the teacher yeah. say? What, what do they say? I'm asking. What, where were you? Like, what, where were you? Yeah. Why are you late? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, um, it's my the bus like it, it, the bus hit a dog and something like that, uh, and you have to you have to say why. Okay. I see where you're right? going with this. Yeah. In Japan, they don't ask why. Oh, you you show up late. You're late. I'm right. sorry, I'm late. It won't happen again. And that's it. Hmm. Even if it's like it's not my fault. I didn't do anything. I'm not. It's not my fault. I'm late. It's not my fault that happened. It's not my fault. Like, oh, the car, the intercooler pipe blew off. It's not my fault. It's your car. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's annoyingly they must like really to that time. level. They must have a really hard time watching uh, translated uh, post, post drift event interviews. Yeah, right. In <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, why is he talking about his tires? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, you can't, you, they don't, you're not allowed to make an excuse. But here's the thing, though. Like, just say, for example, um, in that situation just there uh, where it's like, like just, uh, just say you're late for work or something and, you know, you're on the bus and the bus hit a dog or something and you're late and you just go in and, like, you don't, they want to hear it like, oh, bus hit a dog and it stopped for, like, 30 minutes. They just, I'm sorry I'm late. It won't happen again. And you, you go, you don't sneak in and try and start work. You go in and, let it be known that you're you're late. Like I know I'm late. I'm sorry. Won't have no excuse. And you get on with it. And then maybe later on, you can like someone else will find out, or someone else will tell someone, or someone will know. Like uh, you just or you just slip it in. Like man, it was rough. Like the bus, the bus I was on hit a dog this morning, and it was yeah. And it kind of filters through, and that that's that's sort of how it works. And you, it it's one of those sort of cultural things. It's difficult to to to. Uh, figure it because you know, we're used to the opposite direction where it's like what's the reason yeah um and it's the same thing with cars too it's like what's the reason it's it's like how you see on those videos where someone will crash and they'll get out and they'll immediately apologize to the crowd yeah which is so weird you think about it, it's like <laughs> oh everyone i'm sorry like why are you sorry dude you, <laughs> you crashed we're sorry for you but it's like I'm sorry I'm causing a, a, a delay or problems or issues. I'm, I I wasn't able to show you my good driving sort of thing, and I, I just always thought that was kind of cool. I, um, I respect that. Yeah, it's difficult to. I mean, I'm not saying I'm, I I always live by that because it's kind of hard to. Yeah, you know, flip that turn off actually. the man. It's not my fault. But then you're like, no, it is my fault. So yeah. Anyway, so I just enjoyed everything about it, and um, you know, long long story short, I'm still here. Uh, and it, it sort of went from, um, writing for magazines, like just straight writing for magazines. Then, so this is the end of this. This is the end of the story until now writing for magazines, then coming to Japan, writing for magazines. And then I had all these leftover photos that I thought were kind of cool. Oh, okay. I'll put them on a, a, a website like, um, like Mike Garrett used to do. Yeah. You know, who Mike yeah. Garrett is. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. auto otaku, yeah. Like I was, I was thought, oh, Mike's auto otaku. That's so cool. I want to make something like that when I go over there. 
So I made that, and this is like you know speed hunters and that is sort of becoming popular. So I did that, and I then that became a main thing, and I was you know getting advertising money off that, and selling articles at the same time, and then. Uh, I'd see some cool sort of something. I was like, man, I should make a little video about this. So I had a little, you know, cheap little camera and I'd shoot like some little videos and then I'd edit them together to like a big, like sort of a skate style video. It's like a little, it's like a pastiche of little segments from different events. And then that became popular. And then. Do you still have those uh, up? Yeah. Yeah. They're called Noriero Raw. If you look, they're like some of the older videos. I need to see that. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they're cool. They were, those are the first. I think there were like three of them, and yeah. then that's, that's, uh, that's my speed for sure. Yeah, I'm Yo, I, I, I mean, I, I'd love to do something like that again, like sort yeah. of that skate style videos. But yeah, it's um, but that's that's probably we'll talk about that later. But uh, so then you know, YouTube becomes more of a thing. Uh, you know, people start to be able to you know, there's they don't have download limits, and you can sort of watch more YouTube, and you you can watch it on your phone. It's becoming more popular. And people, you know, like that. So, you know, I'd always had the, it was just a progression of what I, the, to me, it's like the same media, just in a different form, like whatever matches, you know, the, the current delivery system, yeah. which is now, you know, uh, streaming like YouTube and that sort of stuff, which is the best way to do it. And, um, yeah, I'd always had in the back of my head, like, I like making videos. Like I was that guy who always had like a video camera, like, you know, I'd go out with my friends who are skating, like I'd shoot them and. If there's a party, you know, I'd bring the camera and I'd, I'd shoot the, the the people at the party and I'd dub a tape and I'd give it to the host of the party. That's cool. um, yeah, and people always, you know, everyone always likes to see that sort of stuff. Like, no, yeah. it's hard to, it's difficult to make it, but I mean, it's not difficult, but I mean, I guess these days it's kind of different. But yeah, uh, I always got enjoyment out of, you know, filming something and then giving it to people to watch and they'd enjoy it. So, uh, that was the whole thing. Like, I I like this stuff. I want to show you this stuff. The, the whole scratch your it your own itch thing. Like, yeah, I loved yeah. consuming content, the magazines and videos and stuff. Okay, I'll make it now for other for other, for other people because this is what I like. Oh, you should like this too because this is cool. Why why do you not know about this cool stuff that I like yeah. and you should like it too, right? So I um. Always had in the back of my head, like I'd love to make like a TV show or some sort of thing. I actually get this. This is kind of funny. Uh, I, when I was doing like Noriero the the blog, I remember thinking, man, it would be so cool if someone made a website where you could make like a magazine, and it would insert ads automatically, so that you could make like a magazine but then it's like they put ads in it for you and like the ads are like catered to the people who look at it which is essentially what adsense is now yeah i was gonna say you had the idea for google adsense that i yeah 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 Yeah. but it was like a but i had the the wrong thing i had was oh like a magazine but it's video now so i always had that back of my head and then uh the youtube channel for hot rod magazine in the States made these shows called, um, uh, roadkill. I think I've seen which, it, Yeah. Um, I think uh, Tony Angelo is on them actually. Yeah. He became a host on, uh, on that. Yeah. So what that, what that was, was what they do is they'd buy, it was usually like they'd buy some clapped out, clapped out old, like hot rod or, I um, mean, street machine, well, some old American car and they mess around with it. Like in the similar sort of, you know, gas monkey and all that sort of stuff like then, like mm-hmm. those sorts of shows. And, um, but it was a little bit different because it was on YouTube. The format was a bit different. It was a bit less like the crazy cuts and, you know, orange candy chopper sort of thing, like reality TV. It was less like reality TV. It was more like a two guys messing around. Actually building stuff and not arguing about it. Yeah, all that that sort of stuff. And uh, I thought, man, this is so cool. I want to do something like this. And I'd been making videos where I'd, I'd find someone cool and I'd make like a little video about them, like their name, their whatever. And them driving, like I did it with Suenaga, like the uh, just people I thought were cool, mm. and I'd make a little video showing them driving. It was never I didn't want to be I like I didn't want to be on the videos because like, I thought, well, what? I'm not about me. It's about these people. Mm. So I'd make the videos, and then I thought, okay, I'll make one like TV show style video, and it was uh, I bought an A86 and made a, like a a segment where you know I buy it and the background about buying it. 
And then I went to like an A86 day at Fuji Speedway. And then after that, I went to like a track day at Sportsland Yamanashi. And that was it. And I, I didn't realize this at the time, but my face never actually appears on the video once. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I did that on purpose, but I just didn't want to be in front of the camera, I guess. Like that's, I did voiceovers and, you know, the helmet camera, like driving in the car with the lav mic and that sort of thing. But I was never on it. But then uh, I started to realize that uh, it was actually a, a, a photographer who said this to me. Uh, he, you know, he'd put up galleries of um, photos from track days and things like that. And he said, by far, the most viewed pictures, because you can see the statistics, obviously, uh, were the ones that had people in them. Really? Yeah, where uh, people in, like in the pits and stuff like that. And he yeah, said, he, just, that. he said, like, man, like I'll make the, I'll have the coolest action shot, but it's just shots of people messing around in the pits. It's like people like to watch people, and that kind of uh -huh. stuck with me. I thought, all right, well, maybe I should try and like be on the videos in some sense, like even if it's just like talking a lot more and not like sticking it in my face. Uh, but that's sort of how it, uh, it's ended up because that's what people like, I guess, to see. It's like a, yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're an anchor for the content. And you know, YouTube's kind of gone in that direction now where it's um, you know, less about the video itself. And it's like, oh, what's YouTuber doing today? Like you, it's more about that, uh, <laughs> which you know, for, for better or worse, that's how it is right now. So I mean, it's 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 evol Everything's evolving, obviously. Um, you know, but I, I'd make videos like that, and they'd be popular. And it's like, you know, okay, well, I'll I'll do more of these, and it's then we are where we are now. Yeah, I mean, that's what people want to see. It's uh, I yeah, I I think I even I I watched one of the videos where Dago like pretty much runs up on you and your jzx and i that was like that's the I, I i was just having this conversation a couple days ago about like content and like putting out videos and it's like mm. uh you're you're giving like an insight to like this world that people just don't have access to i mean like let like there's people who could book a flight and like go to an event and like it would be hard for them but there's like people who literally cannot fathom the possibility of you know leaving the town they're in yeah know, let alone all they need is an internet connection and they can see this like vast world that you've documented for them which is really cool yeah that's it's it, I, I like the fact you said that because that's i get that people say that a lot where and and that be, it's good because that's the feeling i have like it's like the uh i always I think like when I'm holding the camera, it's like this can't sounds cheesy, but it's like it's like I'm holding someone's hand. Like yeah. come with come with me and see this magical world of stuff that <laughs> Yeah. I, again, That's it's real. the scratch it's the scratch your itch thing. Like I loved finding out about the weird stuff yeah. like that. Like, what what oh what's this place? Oh, this place is so cool. Oh, who's this person? What's it? What what why? What huh? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Now I know that. Okay, I can learn more now. So yeah, it, it's the. I think you do a really good job of finding the the nuance in the stuff and like mm. and like relaying that. Like I think you do a good job of like being like that's a good tidbit of information for people to know, and then relaying that even if it doesn't seem, I don't know, super poignant. Like mm. it is. It's interesting. It's like it, those small details like add a lot to, you know, people who don't know what's going on yeah I, I i think that i i mean i enjoyed finding out stuff like that so therefore i was like well if i like it there's probably going to be other people who like it too and yeah. uh the, the internet allows everybody to access that now like the, the, the type of people who i appeal to can i mean there's anybody in the world can find find my stuff now well, find anybody's yeah. stuff now. So yeah, if uh, you can sort of make whatever you want, as long as you're sort of passionate, not passionate, but like if you're, well, yeah, pa if you're passionate about it or you, you present stuff in an interesting way, I think, I think that's, that, that's interesting, that important too. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, how many times have you, have you watched a video about, uh, I was having this conversation actually yesterday with a guy, like I'll watch videos about, um, you know, cooking guns, uh, you know, horses, yeah. whatever. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like just sort of stuff that maybe you're not necessarily interested in, but 
the presenters present stuff in a really interesting way, like especially when it's a really deep world. Like, for example, I yeah. don't know, like, yeah, like, you watch those, like, like, just as an example, like what I just said, like the, like those um, gun channels. Like, I mean, I grew up in Australia, I live in Japan, like I'm not around that sort of stuff at all. Yeah. But there's some of those channels where they get really deep into like the reason why it functions this way and why this is that and what, what makes it better. And this was, it's like, that's really interesting. Like, I'm never going to have anything to do with this, but I just, I like to watch that. So I kind of try and tr bring that over um, to what I do. Uh, and, and things like, for example, like, you know, those, the pro box video that I, I brought out recently. Yeah. yeah that, <laughs> like that is a absolutely untapped vein of like goofy, funny stuff because nobody, it's never been touched before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, I'm constantly trying to find like, in, you know, not, not like just trying to find new stuff for the sake of it, but stuff that I think is cool and funny. And it's like, well, do other people think it's cool and funny too? Oh, good. I have an excuse to do more of it now. One of, one of my favorite things to tell people about is the like dot, like the seventies Dodge racing that you, that I learned. Oh, about yeah. through you. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? Yeah. It's, the cool, it's like one of the coolest things ever. And yeah, that that really uh, wide uh, that those videos in particular widen my audience quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's interesting. It's like it's it's stuff like it's like yeah, I've seen a lot of drifting clips and I know what's going on in drifting. But like when you come across some like completely mm. unknown subculture that's like kind of related what, to what you're into, it's like mind yeah. blowing. You're like, <laughs> oh, like in some parallel universe, I could be racing Chevy. You know, racing dodge, dodge, dodge like vans. Well, I, you know, I do. I put a bit of. I mean, obviously, I put a bit of hyperbole on everything. Yeah, you know, just to make it yeah. more fun and entertaining. And it, yeah, you know, it's not always as as. Yeah, but sometimes, like the the image of it is kind of better than the reality of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like for example, like you know, uh, a little while back. Um, like on TikTok, there's all these like midnight club videos and stuff like that where you know people talking about like the, the stories of midnight club and all that sort of stuff. Like the, the the I think the story of all that sort of stuff is better than the actual reality of it. Mm. Yeah. Um. Actually, no. Let me correct what I just said. The stories are good. The reality is also insane. But for for the purpose of like making videos and entertainment about something yeah you sometimes have to sort of have to look at the elements and go okay what's the best way to present all this in a way that it makes sense to someone who's never you know if, if you're uh, i remember something about like i think about top gear the editor or the writer or something like that said like um you know your uh your grandmother can watch it at the same time you watch it and get entertainment out of it yeah just because of the 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 way the elements are kind of presented and the the pacing of it and the uh, the story behind it and stuff like that, like, well, yeah. what's this? Okay, why? Well, why do they do that? Oh, okay, well, that I guess I can relate that to what I already know. Um, but that's just so weird. Go, haha, wacky Japan. Like, yeah, it's that it's that combination, like, especially the, the Dodge vans uh, for the Amer for the American audience, especially. Uh, was 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 a mind blowing. Like this is like some car that a, a truck that they sorry a, a van they take people to church in or huh <laughs> what what huh <laughs> yeah I I always uh actually that's one of the most successful formulas for video videos on my channel is showing uh, American car culture in Japan yeah because Americans love it there's uh, a lot and, of us. Well, there's a lot of you, and it always gets a very positive reaction too. Because uh, you, you, I don't know, a much better reaction than I thought. Because people's reactions is generally like, "Wow, they're really taking care of these," and they, and because they they get everything right, like they don't yeah. cut a half bath. Like you know, you see that's the amazing thing. Yeah, that's the, yeah. That's the coolest part of it is like they're like, "Oh, this is this is the style." Okay, I'm gonna emulate that and just nail it. And you're like, "Okay, like man, respect. I." One of the first times I was, I went to Osaka and I was riding, what, what was I doing? I don't know. I was maybe riding in a, in a passenger seat in a car or something, in a truck. I think I was in a passenger, that's right. I was in a passenger seat in a high ace and we were going to a track, I think, down that general direction. And we we're on the expressway and we drove up to this 
you know, it was, it was this 66 Impala. And it was like, you know, going on the express, like it was on, you know, Hydros and Dayton's. And, yeah. and the two guys in the seat, they both were shaved heads with white wife beaters. Yeah. You got like the ben out, like. Yeah. And I come past them like, these guys look like Latino. What the hell? And they had the, they had the, you know, they had the, the glass, the sunglasses like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. the and the little mustache. Look, what? And they were tanned, so they looked like that. You know, the the what's the like the Hector character? You know, from yeah, yeah. from like whatever, like Southern California, Southern California Chicano. Like they were, but they were perfect. And yeah. it blew me away. I wish I got a photo of it or something. It's like, what the hell? Like, I mean, I've never been, I've never been to SoCal, but I've seen you know movies and whatever. Yeah, I know yeah, what it yeah. looks like. It's like, yeah, wow, Japanese people are next level when it comes to emu- you know, making the details right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really enjoyable, and I, I like. You know, I yeah. again, I like that. So I like to sort of point that out to people. Like, like and I, you know, not everyone's really into that sort of stuff. You know the little nitty gritty sort of things like you know some people are just into the more broad like yeah whatever but that's fine like that's that's if people still if people watch it i'll keep doing it yeah i was yeah i was walking through triangle park in like dontonbury and like there was like a bunch of lowriders like pulled over on the side uh and yeah. was, like dudes and like ben davis and stuff and i was just like oh cool you know and they're just like super nice you know like if you like roll like i mean they yeah. have low, they have lowrider meets like they have they have like a king of the streets like in san francisco and there's just like hundreds of low riders like cruising down mission yeah. boulevard and stuff uh and like if you walk up to people there like not people aren't really quite as friendly but it's like yeah they look exactly the same but they're just like oh hey thank you it's so nice to meet you you know oh yeah, yeah right. it's great isn't it and you're like yes yeah yeah. So weird. yeah yeah um i have noticed that with uh yeah, just any anyone involved with that in general, because I think they just appreciate the fact that you understand what they're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. And again, it, it this is uh, something that people who haven't lived in Japan for a while. Again, I'm not trying to make it sound like oh, I know everything, but once you live here for a while, you start to understand that the the type of people you meet in society in any country also exist here. Mm. So you know, you get the there's the redneck sort of people. There's like you know, more like hardcore sorts of guys. There's like surfy types. There's people who are like hippies and naturey type. Like so, whatever type of person you meet in in your country, they they exist here as well. And uh, you know, some people just vibe with the that sort of SoCal you know culture, like or like Hawaiian culture, especially. You know, some people sort of you get people who are like everything's like Hawaiian or you know islandy sort of you know things like that. Like they'll decorate their cars with little you know, things and stuff like that. Hmm. So yeah, whatever you, that that's also good for, uh, as far as, you know, making content here, content, uh, you can find almost any car culture here done. Re- I mean, it's compressed down obviously, but done re- really well. Like, you know, if you like old Italian cars, there's like old Italian car meets. If you like, like whatever you want, it exists somewhere and they have meets and, and they all get really, dr- they drill down into the details and, they get the clothes and they just do it all right. And yeah, it's, it, I, I, I enjoy showing that to people because it, it gets such a good reaction. Um, and, and people will point out stuff too. Uh, like I was, you know, there'll be like a, one of those like 1970s vans, you know, with the diamond shaped windows on the back, whatever, <laughs> and all the whatever. And then, you know, I'll put the video out and there'd be like some sticker on the back window, like, oh, that, that sticker is from a, you know, a certain, it's like a, a, a pass for a certain, national park or something it's like it's and it's but it matches like the order like the number from, plate. yeah, yeah well, it, well it like the details match yeah, yeah. oh i went to this <laughs> i went to this show once it was like a sort of a american style car show and there was this i can't remember what it was but it was like some dead stock like a cord and it was like left-hand drive and it was decorated in a way that it looked like some uh like like a vietnamese teenager owned it you know it had like uh you know uh a pass from like like a parking pass from like some high school you know like pomona high school or something was, please tell me it was please tell me it was green no it was white though okay yeah but it was left hand drive and it had like uh chinese food containers like thrown out in it and like uh just all this stuff like these little details like, that they I definitely decorated. had vietnamese friends growing up that had had accords 
Yeah, well, yeah, it, it just it looked. I just look at it. This looks like some like vet kid owned it. Yeah, it was it was great. Like they put a lot of effort into it, uh, and it had like a for sale sign. You know, like, and they bought it. Oh, and they get like uh, those stickers, like the what is it, like props fifty two or something stickers, like that go like, um, you know, this may cause cancer or something. Like there's these stickers yeah. that go on cars that are sold in 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 California or something. Mm. Like they get they get replicas of those and stick them on. And the, yeah. and they get the the uh, the the sticker that goes on the on the sun visor, you know, like the airbag warning sticker. <laughs> yeah, the ones that we all order from other countries that replace. Yep, they they get the American ones. It's great. Yeah, it's great. It's just yeah, fun. You go to the it's junkyard just fun. And start pulling visors. <laughs> yeah, but the same thing too. Like, uh, I met. I was at a. I went to a car a car park once, and there was a guy with the. Oh, wait, what, what were they? A Saab. And he dressed it up so it looked like a Saab that was bought in America. It was the weirdest combination of like details. Like he'd got, yeah, it was like, why? What? Huh? Was it a Saab? No, it was a Volvo. It was like a Volvo, like S660 or whatever. I don't know what it was, but he, he decorated it so it looked like it would, it was left hand drive and it looked like it had been sold in the USA. I don't know. Yeah, got like, got like, you know, the dealer license plate frame from wherever. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. You see those a lot too. <laughs> yeah, like uh, the, the um on the lowriders, it's like it's like you know Bill Johnson's of Compton or something like the yeah. Those sorts of ones. Yeah, you see those a lot too. Yeah, they 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 get into it. It's good. Um, back on back on like the driving stuff. You've how long have you been in Japan? Uh, like. I think like 15 years. Wow. Wait, 2008. Okay. So what's that? I came, I came November 2008. Yeah. I'll so 15 years. Yeah. 15 years now. Yeah. Um, and so you're like, <laughs> you were going back and forth before, or was that, was that the first trip was 2008? No, no. I, I'd been, I'd been here maybe four or five times all up. Uh, just for like, you know, like I'd come for, a, I'd come like on, like with work, like with the yeah. magazine for like a week and we'd shoot stuff or I'd come for like two weeks and uh, like a little holiday. Like, well, whenever I had a holiday, I'd just come here <laughs> and I'd just go around and do stuff. Like I'd stay at a friend's house or I'd, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd work it out like, okay, I'd go down to uh, Osaka and shoot. Like I'd go down to um, like feed Mm-hmm. like Fujita engineering the rotary workshop and i'd I'd you know i'd call ahead and book it and everything and um i'd do a little feature on their shop and like their you know like the 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 my the mao like the toge rx7 they have and stuff like that and i'd shoot it all and and they they were i mean i guess back then they that happened so little that they were very accommodating all these workshops i'll be like yeah. they, they give me like you know three or four hours of their talk i'd say it's gonna take like an oh, hour maybe oh. And I, they just keep being like, "You want me to move the car over there?" And like, uh, if you don't mind, like, and they were very accommodating, very friendly, like places like you know BR and and Fujita Engineering and all these sorts of places. They were very good. And I'd write the article and then go stay at my friend's house, and you know we'd drive up to Ebisu to go watch you know Matsuri, and I just sort of like you know bum rides and just try and work out a some something you know that. I, where I can make, I can feel, I can shoot uh, videos. Like I'd go to Ebisu, for example, like, cause I was like, it's, there's so many cars there. I'll, I'll be sure to find like at least one cool, you know, something that I can get action shots of. And like, um, I can probably ask them to put it in the, uh, you know, in, in the skid pan somewhere or just somewhere with a nice background, I can shoot it. And, that, and that's what I did. So I'd, I'd you know, I'd make, um, you know, I'd make several articles from one trip and then I'd come back and like drip feed them back to the, uh, the magazine over the next couple of months and make money extra money and yeah uh so that that's sort of how that worked then what was what was a uh, was it hard to like was it hard to like infiltrate kind of like the street stuff or did you just know who to talk to and it was i mean i, I can say that i used to go street drifting a lot i guess <laughs> the statute of limitations is over uh yeah i'd go a lot uh i mean I was pretty broke back then. So street drifting was good because obviously it's free. It's accessible. Yeah. Yeah. It's just accessible. And um, I mean, I, it was just a case of 
talking to people and like, oh, where's a good spot to go? Like, where's what's good? And I mean, there's all the the major places, like like the initial D roads, basically, like all the you know Hapugahara and that sort of stuff. But they were kind of like, um, too famous. Uh, I see. Well, I mean, Hapo is still pretty good, but uh, all that sort of stuff. Like, uh, the places I went were more in like Saitama and like towards like like Saitama Gunma, which is sort of where I lived in Saitama, like just out, outside of Tokyo. And there was still various roads, and either I just rock up, yeah, you know, just go there, and like there might be four or five people, and you just jump out. Hey, what's up? And some you know or you go there and there's like there's a huge amount of people like oh tonight's popping yeah or, <laughs> yeah you just go and just do just go up and down and wait and you know until morning and drive home yeah you, uh, you, I, was that like i don't know was that like uh did you meet a lot of people through that no not really uh mo- I, mean, I mean i don't know because you know it's dark and you don't really you're driving most of the time and you know, you sort of part. No, I, I met most of the people just at, at the circuit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there'd be times where like I'd go to a street spot and I'd go again and I'm like, Oh, Hey, Hey, or I'd meet someone who I knew from the track usually. <laughs> oh, you're here. Hey, what are you doing? Yeah. Or they, or, you know, I'd be at the track and I'd talk to someone and they go, Oh, we're going to, we're going to go out on Saturday to this place again. You want to, we're going to go out. Like you want to come? Like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I'll, I'll go meet them there. Yeah, yeah. Street's not that. I don't know. It was. I mean, it's fun. Um, obviously the risks are a lot higher, and it would kind yeah, of suck yeah. to like drive out all that way, and then someone has a crash, and it's like, oh, okay, well, well, I've got to go home now, and yeah. But the, it, yeah, it got, it, yeah, it's good training for being not stressed about sketchy situations, though. And sometimes too, like if you go like when it rains or something, or if it's like uh, just some like a Wednesday and there's no one there and you can just go the whole time. Cause I'm back on like low power, like on my, on my, yeah, my, my Jason X can make my, you, yeah, it doesn't get hot. Cause you're doing the short. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you know, if you go with some spare set of tires and the tools and you just put, put them in a bush somewhere and yeah, then there's some places too that would have like a, a tunnel next to it which is lit up well. So if there's some problem, you know, you can just roll in there and fix it. It's just all bright so you can fix it. And if someone else has a problem, you just go up and what's, what's wrong? And you go, oh, this, oh, I've got a, I've got a spanner. You can use it. Like, yeah, it was just, it was super chill. Like I never really, I, it's kind of a shame that I never really filmed anything or, I mean, it's too dark. I think for the cameras back then, it wouldn't have really, I would have had to get like a super good, you know, some sort of setup, mm-hmm. but I never really considered it to be anything more than just, seat time and having fun yeah and it was just fun to like line up with a group of people you didn't know uh and you know you'd, you'd pull up to the to the to the stack and people would drive and people would like spin or something and eventually you get like up the front and like oh i'm leading now oh, oh my god holy shit and there's like open waste gates in your ear and it's like the cold <laughs> the cool breeze you know you know when you, you you go in a straight line and you initiate and then the wind comes in through the side window yeah like that fe- yeah that feeling and then you get like this start smoke starts coming in like yeah this is awesome yeah i i just can it was just like that i'd, I'd enjoy it and then i'd just chill drive i'd just drive home just super chill and maybe stop at a like a restaurant on the way home and get something to eat and just go to bed and wake up at like two o'clock and do whatever. <laughs> did you know how to work on cars uh before you went to Japan or did you learn there? No, I I'm I'm still pretty bad at working on cars. Like uh you like you you know you can probably tell what troubles I've had in the past by what I know how to do and what I don't know how to do. Because <laughs> I've had to yeah, learn how to yeah. do it. Yeah. No, I mean, it's what it's just if it's it, Anything that's like the Lego level of cars, I'm fine with it now. You know, it's just like, oh, unbolt this, bolt this on, like whatever. But I've I've never like I've never really like like I've never pulled a piston out of an engine s- sort of level. Yeah, me I, I mean, honestly, man, I'd rather just leave that to people who know how to do it. I mean, th- yeah, there's there is a, a an enjoyment of you know you you change some camshafts and you you put it all you know you put it back together and. You know, you you release the tensioner. It's like, 
is it all okay? And you put the thing back on, you know, the head back on and you do everything else. Okay, got to do these up and the other. Oh, shit. Hang on. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's fun, but I'd rather drive. I'd rather, yeah. I'd rather give it to someone else and then do other stuff to make money and then give them money for that and sort of know it's going to be good. Like, I'm in Japan. Like, there's the, the, I, can, I can get something done in a day that would take me like five days yeah. just by giving it to someone. And you have yeah. all these great shops that, who can like specialize in certain things and yeah. who are happy to work with you, which is nice. You know, like the, they, you know, they, 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 again, you, you'll drive with someone at the track and then you'll take your car to their shop. So cool. you, know, you have a talk about something and yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not very good at it. I mean, I'm, I have, I have confidence, but I mean, if, if there's an if there's an instruction on how to do it, yeah, I'll do it. But it's like if I don't have to do it, I'll just give it, give it to someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I'd, ra- I mean, I'd rather give it than like make videos instead. Yeah, please keep doing that. Yeah. No, I'm not good. I have zero training. I don't know anything. Like I get I get yelled at on the internet when I put like uh, anti C's on my um on my wheel studs, like the copper grease. Mm. No, you can't do that. It- changes the talk settings blah, like no matter what you it's like i mean i would hate to be like a like a a, a welding youtuber or like anything oh, where oh <laughs> uh, yeah you know because I, I i just hate to do stuff where people have an opinion like that uh, yeah 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 it's, I'm gonna, again I'm gonna it, put it, up it, car build videos anytime soon of, anytime yeah. i like talk about some thing that i'm gonna try it's like i get like a ton of like I'm just gonna post driving stuff. <laughs> I mean, I I do have some stuff planned. Like like for example, with the Pro Box, I'm gonna do like a like a, a you know a coilovers, steering wheel, uh, you know wheels, brakes, brake pads, like all the like the sort of the basic stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, look look at what's popular on. I mean, even if you look at stuff like, for example, what's a good, what's a good example of someone doing like like Rob Darm, right? He he gets into it a bit, but he's not really like it's not like a, a, a deep instructional video of how to, you know, machine a, a rotor or anything like that. Like it, it's it's entertaining more than it is like. Uh, I think people like to watch you suffer. But that's what the internet is not suffer like in a bad way, but uh, people like people enjoy watching. This is my experience anyway. Like people enjoy watching the struggle more than the actual like procedure. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's people out there who. I mean, that's what the sec- that's that's what the second YouTube channel is for. If I want to put out some sort of like, this is exactly how I did it. I'd do it on the second channel. Like the first channel is like, no, nah, no one cares about that. When you look hmm. at any other, any any entertainment where it's about cars, it's like there's no. It's only when there's like an interesting little fact that I think is it's it's enjoyable. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I I I don't dislike it. I don't dislike doing it, but if I don't have to do it, I won't do it. Um, I'll just do what I need to. Or like if, if it's something where I want to learn, if it's getting in the way of me learning how to do better at something, um, I'll, I'll sort of sit down and, you know, like how to adjust the coilover properly, properly. like not just, not just wind the bottom up and, oh, it's low now. Like, you know, like <laughs> take, I mean, you know, do things like, like take like disassemble like take the coil over out um you know loosen the the arms and stuff so they can move freely like put the you know put the the knuckle on a jack and like look at how it moves and like measure it and they're, okay so if i if i wind this in oh okay it move the it it rotates forward now okay that's that's what that is like just stuff like that just so i understand how it works or like take the coil out of a out of a coil over and put it back in and like see how far up it goes and like okay so that's as far as it can move and but if i do that it's going to foul the wheel and like all that sort of stuff. i've sat down and done that sort of stuff before just just so i understand how it works not yeah. because i want not because i want to do it like at least so i can know what i'm you know there's that scene in um uh what's the what's the tom cruise uh, nascar movie days of thunder mm-hmm. where you know, he's a he's an indie car driver and he's like the 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 mechanic guy says okay we'll we'll put some 
uh, we'll put a bit of wedge in here, take a bit out there. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> like that. I, I feel like that a lot of the time. Like people talk about stuff. Like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And it, it feels bad too. Cause there's guys who I know, uh, not, not Japanese, like even like, you know, guys overseas too, like in Australia and stuff like that, who are just, they know everything about every single little thing about suspension and, you know, they can make, they can build their own suspension out of, you know, CNC and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, that's so cool, dude. But yeah, uh, I know that that's not my, I know, I, I, but uh, again, another movie quote, uh, was it the dirty Harry A man's got to know his limitations. Like you got to know your limitations and also know your strengths. So I know my strengths and I know other people's strengths too. So again, it's, it, it, I think it's a good, for me too, it's, uh, it's cool to, show other people's other people doing cool stuff like if i know someone could do something cool it's like i'd rather show them doing it because it's like look at look at this guy doing cool stuff and then you know yeah uh, so you actually speaking of australia you just went to australia to drive a hachi How was that? yeah so uh that event uh was run by this outfit called drift cadet uh, who run uh, they they run both the drift school and they also do like drifting like like packaged drifting demonstrations for other events like if if like summer nats the big event in australia mm-hmm. uh, they have a they run like the drifting section of that like they're sort of tasked with doing that um you know organizing drives and stuff like that so uh, i was originally meant to go there before uh you know the the last couple of years happened uh i was booked into yeah i was booked in to do that um i was originally meant to go i think with kaicho we we were sort of going to go together but then kaicho went separately uh and um there was another event uh run by some different people in melbourne who i was also sort of maybe meant to go with but then the timing didn't work out because i'd already promised to go with these people actually hurt went there (laughs) on the same I saw that. like the day before yeah the day before i was there hurt was there and we, unfortunately we didn't get the meet um but uh so that event was in this place called calder park which is uh it houses what's known as the thunderdome which is australia's only uh oval track that still exists yeah there was a uh there was a series it was called ozcar <laughs> no way enough. yeah we had a, a the australian version of nascar and hmm. the track, I think, is it's meant to be like the same. It's like a scaled down uh, Charlotte, I think, is what they said. Like the same. It's like a similar sort of setup to Charlotte Speedway. And um, then connected to that is a is a racetrack. And they used actually used to run like a racetrack, and then they do like a lap of the the oval, and then back out. It was Whoa. it was like having you know we have those um, events where there's like the like a Daytona or whatever they have the the oval and then the mm. infield and then back out it's like that but like separated Whoa. yeah it was, yeah, it was it's, it's a really cool place uh, and for it was owned by a company uh, called Bob Jane who was Bob Jane was a racing driver who had a, a huge chain of tire shops and then after Bob died uh, they kind of let the place kind of just fall into disrepair because it was, there's this whole story man about they didn't want to spend money on it because then when when it it got the the assets got passed on like they wouldn't get it, all that would go to somebody else and the people who could have repaired it wouldn't get any benefit out of it so they didn't do it and I don't know there's this whole story about it uh yeah it's, it's a shame but um yeah I just went to an event there as like a guest driver which I've done a few times before uh I've been to like um Norway with Ken Gushi cool. uh, for Gar- for Gartabil. That was cool. That was fun. I bet that was awesome. Yeah, it was it was I would interesting. Love to check that out. Gartabil's interesting, man. It is it's very interesting. Uh I've been to that. I went to like an event in Poland as a guest driver uh, with Aaron and Chelsea were there as well. Um I went to Texas a couple of years ago with um yeah, Aaron yeah. again. And that was the first time where where I'd had like a little, you know, meet and greet session and all this there's this huge you know group of people and I'm like oh oh crap it's really hot and i, I want to say hello to everybody but i don't want it's everyone's gonna pass out from the heat um and then this one same sort of thing like we had a little meet and greet at the end and there's all these people and everyone's really keen to see i was like wow this is wow i finally get to sort of because I'm, I'm really disconnected from everything over here yeah, uh, yeah. i saw it's, it's like 
when I met you, I saw you at you were at uh, WCU, like I think it was like Fall Monster 2016, and you're just working on the beer can. You're putting like a <laughs> light bar on it. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> solo. And I was like, oh, that's Alexi. What's up, dude? Yeah, yeah. No, I think it, I, I, I've, I've sort of, I, I like that. Like, it's just cool, like whatever. But, um, uh, just being not, ha- not knowing anything about that, I think is fine. I'm fine with that. But then all of a sudden, there's like a, I had like a 30 minute session. Does this sound like I'm boasting or something? I don't know. I mean, whatever. No. But there was like a 30 minute session, a lot uh, allocated for my meet and greet. It was like two and a half hours. So I, I feel bad. Like everyone's lighting up and like waiting to talk to you. It's like. Uh, it's not like you owe them anything, but it's like, man, you, if if I just want to, you know, I, I want to hear what you have to say. And it was cool, like meeting the various kinds of people. And uh, it, it was the first time that that had happened where I've sort of learned what kind of people, you know, watch what I do. And it's pretty much exactly what I expected, honestly. The type <laughs> of like, like basically like me, if I never left Australia, like the same sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, they gave me a car to drive as well, a, a, like an A86. It was pretty much stock, so it was it was kind of hard to to drive with other people there because it was a bit of a power gap. Like a lot of the people have a bit more power, and um, there was there was a guy in like a K70 Corolla, but I never was out in the track at the same time as him. So I just did laps uh, and just tried to drive as best I could, and um, yeah, it sold like a bunch of t-shirts and stuff, and it's like, yeah, it was cool. It's like, oh, this is sort of oh this, that, that's right this is like the 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 youtuber experience where you meet people and sell merch and that sort of thing yeah it was fun yeah is that yeah like in japan you're just alexi i'm just that guy <laughs> nobody cares <laughs> i now i mean nowadays if i go to a track day and you know just sometimes like oh i watch your videos like that's about it well, that's cool it's fine i'm, I'm fine with it <laughs> I, yeah. I like to just yeah I think I'm there to drive, or if I'm, I'm just here to, to drive. Video stuff, yeah. Well, yeah, it, it it makes it more of a natural experience for the videos too, where, where it's like you know you can sort of self insert into that, where it's like you're just you're just you're there. Yeah, I guess I didn't really think about that. Like you know, if people are like, "Oh, that's Alexi," like this, this is, you know, I want to be on that video, and you know, people are like, "You you can just like cruise up to people, and that's not weird or whatever." Hmm. It's kind of makes it i guess more authentic feeling for everybody yeah I, I like that i like the way yeah i like the way that that it, it works out that way at the same time though i, I'm, I mean I've, I've been around for long enough that you know i can i can sort of walk up anyone who's like been around for like since who i've met some when i sort of was there early on i could just walk up to them and just talk about whatever and it's there's no i don't have to get into it ever like yeah i mean I, the the fact that i've just been there for so long uh actually the the editor of drifting goku once said to me like alex you every time i go somewhere you're there like at, w- at one point it was kind of like that yeah just being like part of the 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 scenery and um you know you start to you 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 meet people it, it, it's important to go I, this is the way i look at it is i like to i like to go to like someone once uh, asked me like oh were you part of a uh like i, I did like a patreon uh, ama and someone said, oh, were you part of like a drift team or something? It's like, I, I always sort of tried to not be uh, in any one particular group. Just because I like to be able to go to different places and have like a relationship with a certain group of people separately with no like connection to, to something else. Mm. Just as like a, that's like a sort of a more of a media person thing. Like back in, you have to be like neutral and you can sort of go and talk to anybody. Interesting. And I, I just sort of kept that up. Like, you know, I go to, I go to Mabara and there's like the, there's the, you know, Charme and Enjoy and like all those sorts of teams there. And like, there's like a couple of guys who I know and you can just talk to them or you go here and like, I talk to these guys. And, and there's yeah. no like, yeah, you don't have to worry about like, oh, well, I'm part of this group, so I can't, you know, be involved. Yeah. In Cause that, cause that, they, they have a disagreement or whatever. That, yeah, that, 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 that exists, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as the the Japan side of it goes, yeah, it's like just try and just be in the middle of everything, and because um, it's more fun. Like you get, you know, it's just fun to be involved with different groups who have different sort of priorities. Like like yesterday, I went to Nico Circuit, and it was a, a bunch of. It was re- actually it was really interesting. 
uh, it was a track day that was run by a bunch of street drifters. And they're all really young. They're all like, you know, between like 22, 25, 26, like that sort of you know age. And um, they're all like hardcore street guys. You know, they go to like Daikoku and, and, and you know, around Funabashi and all that sort of stuff. And I saw they were running a, a, a Sampatsu event on the back straight at uh, Nikko Circuit, which is like the, I made a video about that once. Um, it's meant to look like the, the street drift spot at Oi, Oifto, where you come around the long sweep, uh, switch back and flick it into the, into the corner, which you can do there. And I thought, okay, I'll go into this and just, just for fun. And uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Like all the, I'm meeting these guys there. This, I met this guy who's parked next to me. He had a, also had a white S15. I only had my S15. I didn't have my JZX ready, unfortunately. But you know, he's like, yeah, this is my third time drifting ever like on the track. Third, third time ever? Holy shit. And there was a, a girl. He's like, I, mean, I think it was his girlfriend parked next to him. And it was like her first time. Like, it's, wow. It's, it, it's, so, it's such a gap. I feel like <laughs> there's such a gap between like what I've experienced and what they're experiencing now. So yeah, it, it's fun to like go to all these different sorts of things and just sort of experience different things. The downside of that, I will say, is uh i think for drifting especially or any sort of car stuff if you don't focus and this is sort of a youtuber thing i think too i don't don't like saying youtuber but uh you kind of dilly dally in a bunch of stuff you can't really concentrate on one thing Mm. uh i think that there's there's sort of a a pressure that you know the the market is putting on you where you have to like you know like uh you see that guys like I bought or whatever I bought like every, every second video is like, I bought this, I bought that, I bought that. And that's sort of like uh, seen as like the, the new normal where you have to like buy something new, like every other video or do something, you know, big like that, every single one. And I feel bad. Like when I make videos, I was like, Oh, here's I'm at Nico again. Hey, how do I make this interesting? Yay. It's yeah, kind of difficult I- that way. Uh, where I, w- I would really like to focus on, you know, one particular thing, uh, but it, it's difficult to do that. And uh, that's sort of one of the things that I, I kind of not regret, but like, it would be nice if I could be more like better at one particular thing instead of like going around at the same time, though, it is a lot of fun to like go around and experience a lot of different stuff. And I, I do see that, see that here with like, I'll, you know, some drivers, like they only go to you know, one particular track day every month, like it's run by the same people and they do the same thing with the same car. And it's like, or like the guys who uh, are really good at, who do well in competitions, like the guys who do well in like, you know, um, divisional and lights and stuff like that. Like you, they, you only see, like they've had the same car for 10 years. They only drive like two tracks and you know, they'll, they'll do things like, this is really clever. I never thought of this. They'll buy they'll they'll buy two entries for the track day, and they'll go in two different classes. So they'll go in like middle class and expert like expert one, mm-hmm. so they can get like double the amount of track time in one day to like compress the amount of you know training they can do in a day. And I was sort of like, man, it'd be nice to try and do that maybe once, but I don't know if it would probably cause the content to suffer. Uh, because like you said, like, oh, I love the 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 dodgy van stuff. I was like, it's all the it's always like the cool weird stuff that gets um, uh, you know, a lot of the 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 attention. But I don't know. I mean, I I was you know, I'm always trying to keep on top of how to do how to media better, and and you know, talk to people who have more experience and and things like that. And uh, one. One rule that I sort of saw recently, and not just in the car world, obviously, like in in other sorts of, of things too. And one interesting rule that um, I've been trying to sort of follow recently is like the one in five rule, where mm-hmm. one piece of content in every five is just completely different to what you normally do. Hmm. Just make it different, like just make it odd or not what people expect, or just something you've wanted to do, maybe, or just just something different, like drifting video, drifting video, drifting video, drifting video. Um, you know, motorcycle video or or like some random thing or just something different. Um, because the the logic behind that apparently is that your regular your regular audience won't really 
they just either they just won't watch it or like oh whatever like either your hardcore like people will watch it or they'll, they'll just like okay whatever what's the next on the list on the on the previews page um but you will capture a new audience from that mm. you'll get like the the people who are like oh what's this and they'll they'll start following you and then if may, you get like a retention as a result of that and that's sort of what i've got from things like the like the dajivan videos like the um the itasha videos especially i bet i got a huge i had no idea people love i had no stuff. idea i i think it, it helps too that i'm i mean i'm sort of uh genuinely like, i'm not fake i'm not like, like trying to be like a fake like anime nerd like i'm <laughs> i am genuinely-, genuinely that like bad like from back in the day so i think people vibe with that as well so they can um, appreciate that, and yeah, it, it's it, that. That's sort of what I've been trying to do is uh, use that as an excuse to show like weird, random stuff. Sometimes it doesn't work. Like for example, I showed a, um, I did a video about um, these uh, p- group of people who drive, you know, old hot rod. Not are they called hot rods? Like old like cars from like the nineteen thirties and forties, and they they drive them on like there's an event they have where they drive them on like a, a dirt bank. Like a, it's on the bank of a river. And it's a, yeah, it looks like uh, if you put like a sepia filter, it would look like Tennessee in like the 1940s or something, like 1930s like or something. Bootleggers and stuff. Yeah, it totally. It's just all, it's all like bootlegger stuff, like bootlegger cars. Yeah, yeah. and it, it got like a hundred thousand views, but it's like I wasn't expecting it to do well, but uh, it didn't really get. It got like a, a lukewarm video, a lukewarm views, and also lukewarm res- response. Like huh. no one, people were like. Oh, that's cool, but no one really sort of got in, got their teeth into it. Whereas stuff like the Dudgy Man stuff like that, like people like got their teeth into it, and that that got on. And again, weird stuff like the the uh, the the Supra down the back of Ebisu, you know the uh, the um, unrecoverable Supra. Yeah, that's an Ebisu, by the way. If people didn't know that, it it crashed down the back of Minami a long time ago. Just weird, random stuff like that, where I thought, okay, I, I I've heard of this car. That's because I'd shot a separate video that day, uh, and it turned out that the video I shot like in thirty minutes at the end of the day was like did like ten times better. Which is this is the it's the excitement of um of, of you know making stuff like this where it's like you you press the you, know, it's the you press the button on the slot machine. It's like is it going to be a good one this time? Uh, and it turned out to be really good. Like I waited until the end of the day until everyone stopped drifting so you couldn't hear any car noises, and I'm like this is a secret road where's this car apparently down here and they're making up some bullshit story yeah. and um you know go to, walk down there and shoot this thing come back and all of a sudden it's a it, it it's getting featured on like yahoo news finland and stuff like that yeah and people are making uh, uh people are making like cg uh like replicas of it like in like they make there's this guy on youtube who makes like um you know, there's that that style where people will take like a a brand new car and make it look like it's like a wrecked, abandoned car. Mm-hmm. That's sort of like, yeah. And he made it in 3D, and it's like he made a replica of it. And a guy actually made a model of it, like a little um, diorama, a model maker, like a, a like a sort of a, 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 a model maker Instagrammer. Yeah, and it just so blew cool. up, and uh, people making art about it. It's like you never know what's going to strike. So. That's where this rule comes from. Like the one in five, like just make something kind of different, and sometimes it'll it'll hit. And um, I asked you, you a while you, ago, you like, expand your audience. Have, you do everything yourself, and that blew my mind. <laughs> like, uh, like. The only thing I don't do is uh, like the the I'm like my t-shirt designs and stuff like that. I have a designer friend who does that for me. Uh, yeah. And the intro editing. song is was made by a, a different person, but every yeah everything else i Shout do myself my yeah my own yeah my own man yeah that song uh but everything i i shoot everything myself i edit everything myself um uh yeah i, I i'm looking into i i would love to be able to hand off a video and for someone else to edit but i'm just kind of af- afraid that it would lose the flavor of yeah, how yeah. i do it You've had your style for so long, and it, I, I, I don't worry. I have um, I've sat down and had like board meetings with myself about what I can do to make this more efficient. <laughs> I'm serious. I have like this sounds kind of weird. I have like split personality meetings where like I kind of 
this, okay, this sounds like schizophrenic or something. I don't know, whatever, but where I'll sit down, but just to try and clarify, like I'll sit I down and go, okay, I, 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 okay, I'm now I'm like marketing department, Alexi. Okay, so how are we going to, you know, make this, you know, what are we going to do to like have like a, a regular schedule so we can sort of stick this way? And then, then there's like um, the finance, finance department, Alexi, um, where, this like finance department, Alexi, where I'm like, okay, well, the, the budget on this video was, you know, we kind of spent too much money. We can't do a video like this again, but I know we have to do another one because it's like going to be part of this story, but I don't know about that. And yeah, just all this sort of weird stuff like that. Like I feel really silly doing it, but I end up with like a proper like, you know, meeting and like, okay, and a way forward <laughs> of how to do it. Um, I think if you get to the point where your style is easily copyable, then it's probably a good idea to give it to someone to edit. But I, I like the fact that I can be sort of different and fluid. Like, for example, if you, I mean, you know, all the, 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 you know, the talking head YouTubers, like, you know, whatever, like PewDiePie or Markiplier or something, like they can just, they can hand their stuff off to someone because their style is like defined. Like they know it's all set basically. And I mean, yeah. if you said to someone, okay, make a, make a YouTube video that's like a Top Gear video. You know, like it's defined or make it look like a, like a, you know, a orange candy choppers video where it's like, it's got the voiceover and then it cuts to the guy kind of sitting like this, like, yeah, you know, we didn't think we'd make it in time. And then it cuts them because, but we really pulled together and got it out in time for the show. Yeah. And then it cuts the, you know, yeah, it's all, it's just, yeah. If it gets to the point where you can do that. And I don't know if it's, maybe someone can tell me, I don't know. Like if you watch a Norio video, is it kind of like, I mean, I know I have the standard sort of intro, like. I keep experimenting with it, like doing like today on Norio. And then I do the little quick intro. We're going to do this, 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 and this. And then I cut to the, the my own song. And I, I love that song. And people, people get hyped on it, which is why I'm never going to get so rid good. of it. Yeah. Everyone's like, when they hear that song, it's like, yeah, it's like the, the, the dinner bell, you know, you start, you hear the, Oh, and you start salivating. It's that sort of thing. Um, and I kind of follow the same thing, like the, the intro, there's the little bits of information, then we get into the meat of it. And then, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I would like to hand it off. I have been talking to a couple of editors about um, making content, like edited down things where I've done things like um, like live streams on Twitch or um, studio videos like, like, like this, where I'm sort of talking about something that, you know, you just need to basically just edit it out the awkward silences and that's it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, but I, I mean, I hate, <laughs> everybody hates editing, right? Nobody likes editing. Yeah, right. For the people listening to this, nobody likes editing. Everybody hates it with their soul because it's like, it's just time spent, you know, getting in between making more cool stuff. Um, at the same time though, when you put it out, it feels pretty good when it's like, okay, there we go, publish and you put it out and you get sort of hyped on your own edit because you, yeah, you did something yeah. cool and there's a cool little jump cut somewhere and it fits in where there's like there's a little, you know, spike in the action or something. And yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I would like to give it to someone else and be more efficient about it and make more than like one video a week. Uh, but yeah, I'm working on it. I've been working over the past year on a lot of stuff. I know everyone, everyone says this, you know, I've been trying to work in behind the scenes and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just a, it's a refining of the system, but man, the, the pressure you got ever, I don't think everyone understands the amount of the level it is these days. Sorry. I know we're talking about like, you know, content creation again and stuff like that, but the cool. level these days is insane to the, you know, you're looking at videos like, like Mr. Beast doing like each episode is like cost more than most tv shows and they're doing insane stuff and even like in the car world like um i mean like you know cletus mcfarland and um who's the guy with the with the truck uh whistle and diesel whistle and diesel like all that stuff like the level you those oh, those yeah, were like yeah. those were tv shows back in the day yeah and it's I mean, yeah, yeah. They're, doing, they're doing like top gear stuff yeah we're yeah, drop a car out of a helicopter. You're like, what? right? And we're gonna film yeah, so it with the, iPhones and GoPros, and you're like, okay. yeah. The, the the gap is insane, right? It's like, yeah, shot with with like iPhones and edited on laptops. That, like, 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, video quality is not as important as, um, as you'd expect. <laughs> but, the, but then again, it, uh, uh, I think there's um I mean I like to sometimes like in like inject little cinematic shots or something that looks cool just to break up the action and and keep people interested and you know I I I do enjoy the uh the, the challenge of you know presenting something as cool as possible with uh you know the minimum minimum amount of effort. Oh, man, I did this other video. I don't know if you saw them on my Instagram. Uh I did these other videos recently. So there's a company called Velo, which is, um, it's like snooze. You know what that is? It's like the, the tobacco you put in your, in, your, in your lip like that. Like it's not like chewing yeah. tobacco. It's like a little package. And yeah. apparently they're, yeah. they're popular in like Sweden and Norway and places like that. And they sponsor the McLaren F1 team. It's like it's British American tobacco, but it's like a, the, the brand of that. It's like, you know, smokeless tobacco. And, um, so if you look on the on the you know the orange F1 cars, it says Velo, depending on depending on the country and the and the laws, but it says Velo. And I got they contacted me, uh, a guy from a, a British production company, and um, said, "Oh, we're we're making this series of videos, actually with um, James Dean's girlfriend Becky as one of the the hosts, and this other guy Archie, who's a like a racing like a Le Mans driver, like he's a like a professional racing driver, and they're sort of going around the world and featuring uh, your car culture from around the world, like um, like Czech truck racing, uh, like Czech tr- uh, like ch- truck trials. You know, they, they get those like crazy Russian trucks and they drive oh, them through cool. quarries and yeah, and like. Um, you know, Italian hill climbs and all this sort of stuff. And they said, we want to come to Japan and shoot a bunch of stuff there. You know, we'd like, and we, you, we try and get like a local um, YouTuber to be like the third host. It's like, okay. Um, Cause I get these contacts every now and again, and they never talk about money. <laughs> they kind of let, they always like want to find, you know, like, they never bring that up first. Uh, there was another one too. Um, I won't say which one it was, but yeah, they uh, who who they shot they actually shot some stuff here, but I I kind of not didn't get involved with it because it's like you know, you paying or what's going on, but they just brought up first like we want to pay you this much to get involved for this amount of time. I was like, okay, cool, and the difference in production, I mean, I kind of it was fun to get involved. You know, there's like there's ten people there, and like the proper like the boom mic guy with the with the you know the 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 mixer and everything and cameraman and it's all you know the the producer the director the people from the company making sure we don't say like i said uh at one point we were just sort of talking like we went for a ride like a bosozoku car and i was like oh yeah it was cool like well they they were like kids waving at us and 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 they interrupt the the lady interrupted it's like can we can we not mention kids please like (laughs) because it's like a tobacco company so we can't say anything like that yeah (laughs) yeah and we we shot they organized like we got Naoki Nakamura to come out at Ebisu and we did drifting there. And I saw uh, that. It, Actually, I had a really funny thought about that situation. I was like, Right. Do, does does Naoki know that he's taking James Dean's girlfriend or for a ride along? I think he I'm <laughs> pretty sure he knew. Uh, I mean it might have it might have been explained to him at some point. Uh I think like, no, I think he no, he would have known because I think Becky got James on FaceTime at some point during the day. Oh, that's cool. Like, yeah. And showed him what was going yeah, he's on. Like, I gotta, he's like, I gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> she rides with James Dean, you know. She, yeah, she yeah right. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and it was, it was interesting because you know it's a that that company that uh, shoot had a uh, a lot of um, a, you know a budget. It had a decent budget. I was like, man, if I had a budget and people, I could get like so much more done. Um, but I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I just it, yeah. Quality. I mean, my you know, people say like, "Oh, look, we like the fact that the videos are good when you put them out, and they're not like." But at the same time, I know they want more. So, I mean, one person will say one thing, like one person will say another thing. Yeah. So, I don't know. It. It. But it's still it's enjoyable. I'm still enjoying it, so I'm still doing it. It's it's a it's a thing now. So, yeah. Do you ever think you're gonna like? I don't know. There's so many like subcultures within Japan and automotive and. Like, mm. Do you think you're ever gonna like run out of stuff to f- discover? Like, are you still like no. finding crazy stuff all the time? Uh, n- n- 
Uh, I mean, no. Because <laughs> you can always you can always drill down into interesting little niches somewhere. Because you got to remember. Okay, so I. Yeah, you know, there's been there's been a lot more people making that sort of content in Japan recently. Either either they're coming from overseas or they're here and and that sort of stuff. It's like we're we're never gonna run, even with you can get like another like twenty people doing it and you'll never run out. I, I don't think because you've got to remember the the major all this cool stuff was it came about in like the eighties and nineties, right? So you know during Japan's like economic bubble and everyone had money and like there's I have a list of stuff like potential uh, like on my on my um was it YouTube uh, not YouTube Google Maps. Of like stuff that I, I I see some cool stuff and like I put a pin somewhere in the country, and then I'm sort of trying to find like okay if I can find like two or three things in like one place I'll go there and do that, and and you can make so it it can be I mean if you present something in an interesting way, and it has some sort of interesting story behind it, then no you'll never run out. It's so, it's there's so much of it out there because uh, the the stories and the like for example I you also discover stuff along the way too like I'll go out to do an article uh, a video and I'll I'll discover something they're like wait wait a minute oh shit this is like a, worth an extra segment or like an, an extra oh I'm I'm actually going to completely change the story now uh, like when I went out to uh, I did an A86 day video and I went out to this workshop and turns out that the owner of the shop may have been the inspiration for uh takumi what yeah because the there's he he was um like the he had a, an a86 with a certain number plate and if you look at the number plate in the initial d manga it's the same number plate with like one extra digit Whoa. And he said that he, yeah he said that um he was driving along on this mountain road like up in nagano and um this WRX came up behind him, like a blue WRX, which the 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 writer of Initial D has one. And he said that he, after a few corners, he lost this WRX. And then he fe- he saw later on that, um, you know, the, the it, it all it, like it all kind of tied together. He's like, oh shit, that was me, sort of thing. Yeah, I mean the the idea for the A A eighty six was around before that. Like there there were like the guy who wrote Initial D, he did have a manga before that where there wasn't an, uh, an A eighty six in it, which did like racing, uh, did like mountain racing. But uh, yeah, there's there's little combinations of things that tied together. And the funny thing is, the same guy actually still owns he owns an A eighty six now, which looks like the Tofu car, and he drifts it, uh, like it tracks as well. So. Just stuff like I, I didn't know that. Like I knew the guy was cool. He had a cool workshop with like oh he's got like a big collection of stuff. It's like a Ferrari and a Porsche and a bunch of all. He's got like a JZ90 missile that has been rolled over and all this sort of cool stuff. And then in the office, I was like, "What's this?" And he's like explaining that. Like, oh, okay, yeah. So you can you just start you lift a rock up and it'll, you know it's like when you lift a rock up and all the bugs come out. It's like oh, there's all this cool stuff and you'll find one interesting thing. And I think that's one of the things that I think I'm good at is. Uh, figuring figuring out what people find interesting, not just mm-hmm. superficially, because it is it is easy to be superficially interesting. But the problem with that is you end up with like superficially interested people. Like it's like the like the whole you know TikTok thing now, where you know people watch videos, but they get like you have zero investment in the content. It's just yeah. like oh, yeah. dopamine hit next, dopamine next. And um, you notice that in the comments too, like the, some of the videos, the, the people who watch, like they're just like, they're just there for like, just cram flashing lights in my face. They're not, <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you're not, yeah. bu- you're not building a sort of a, a you know, a, a good relationship, rapport. a yeah. rapport. Re- yeah. And um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a bit of a skill to find something where you can engage someone um sort of by knowing what they what they because here's here's the thing here's one thing you see sometimes people who say like hey guys um so tell me what you'd like to see in my videos that that is like that is death for someone who makes content like if if you're at that stage and i've seen like big websites do that like or big 
create like you know places do that it's like oh my god really huh i mean obviously i ask like i have a patreon now and i'm I'm sort of giving a bit of control to um the audience on there because you know they're, they're actually invested like actually invested in what i do so i'd like to give them a bit of control like for example um the wheels i bought for the um for the pro box build like i've got them from work um like someone made a a, a mock-up of it on these particular like these work rs11 wheels which are like sort of a retro style wheel and a guy i know who works at work uh hit me up and said hey let's make this happen so i said oh shit okay well um they have a few different designs so i'm i i pay i paid someone see this this is how it's starting to, to, to work a bit more i paid someone to photoshop the different colored wheels on on a on a pro box i put them up on my patreon and said hey which one vote for a wheel and I bought the set that um, oh. that 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 won. Yeah, so there, cool. there's 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 that side of it. But um, at, at the same That's time, actually really clever. Yeah, just I, I mean I don't mind giving people a bit of I'd like to give people a bit of control over it. But that's different, I think. To hey guys, what do you want to see? It's like you should yeah. know. That's your job to find <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it, it's like the what's that? You know, remember the the Homer in the Simpsons? <laughs> oh, we need tail fins and bubble domes. Like if when he, if you put them you all know, together, people don't know what they want until you show it to them, and it's your job. It's like the the whole thing, like the BlackBerry and iPhone thing. You know, back in the day, it's like people don't want to type on a screen; they want a keyboard. And then people say like, no, no, it's, I don't want to type on a screen. The keyboard's better because it's I can touch it and it's better. And it's like, what are people? Was everyone's just on a screen now? Where's your, so, where's uh, your BlackBerry now? Where's your BlackBerry now? That, actually, there's another little funny thing about that too. But um, uh, that's one thing too. When you see, this is just a personal observation. When you see a company make a musical, a, a, a like an unrelated musical video. Uh, you know they're gonna die. Like BlackBerry, they made this uh, song. It's so cringy. You can look it up. It's a. It's uh, never gonna stop loving you. Is it like Ario <laughs> Speed, Speedwagon or something like that? That's a, that song. They made like yeah. a a version of that about BlackBerry. That was like when the BlackBerry was about to come out, and it was like the last one. And I remember I saw that. I'm thinking like, why are you spending your time on making a like a, a song? You should be concentrating on your product and when you see uh like I, I, there was this daily tv show uh, like a daily youtube show about car news a while back um i can't remember what it was called and they made i was i would, I'd sort of watch it sometimes and they made this sort of musical dance number uh in like they're, they're like dancing in new york and they're wearing like the like those 1920s sort of outfits talking about where the best car news in the world and it's like what are you doing? And they got cancelled after that. <laughs> it, it's, it's like a, it's like a, a little like um, canary thing, you know, canary in the coal mine thing. When you see people, just people when they when they do like completely unrelated shit like that, or, or and like concentrate on the content. What do people want to see? Find that, like find that stuff. It's there. You know, don't just look at what exists and and try and redo it yourself. I mean, there's a combination of everything. Like, you know, it, it's, um, you know, one of the rules is, uh, you know, copy someone but make it your own. Like when, you, when you're starting out on YouTube or starting out making content, like it, it's, 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 it's interesting seeing how it all changes. Like as I'm sort of like, I'm on, it's like I'm on the wave and the wave keeps changing shape. I'm trying to like stay on it. Uh, like there's a, there's a YouTuber called uh, Ludwig. Uh, he's like a live streamer and YouTuber called Ludwig. And um, he blew up recently. And he he made some videos about the way he structured his content to become more popular. And one of them was uh, the uh, the grab and twist was one of his techniques <laughs> where you you take you take content that someone else has done and you make you <laughs> you make it your own, like you you put your own twist on it. Mm, clever. Which is uh, I mean it's it's a good way of doing it when you're starting out. But the the, the problem with that dance. is it ends up being. Yeah, it, it's repetitive, and someone else has already done it. And unless you can do it better than they have, eh, and then you you kind of, it's like you kind of go out, you kind of fall back, and then it's like, oh, hey guys, well, tell me what you want to see. And it's like, eh. 
Like that that's the most important thing I think is showing people stuff that they didn't know they wanted to see. Like you said, the 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 dodgy van. Like I didn't know I wanted to see this, but I'm glad I did. Yeah. And I'm I'm always kind of looking for that. And it's the same thing like with the with the the pro box too. Like that was like um that was like a test when I first made that first video. Like it cost the the budget of that was almost nothing. Uh, I I didn't have to spend any money on it, and the video made enough money to buy the car. There you go. Yeah, and uh, you know I I learned a lot about it at the same time. Like uh, for example, in um, see the, it, it works both ways. I noticed this from back in the day too. Like when I I put content out, and people who know about what you made content about are more than happy to tell you what they know, like some little detail about something. So I learned, so there's this, pro, if, if, for, for those watching, if you haven't seen it, just go and watch like one of my ProBox videos. A ProBox is a, uh, it's the same sh- base as like a, a, a Vitz, you know, a little 1.5 liter, just economy car, but it's got a, like a, a wagon shape on the back and it, it doesn't weigh much. It can carry like 300 kilos worth of stuff. Uh, the width of the inside is, is, uh, measured so it's like a standardized size so it'll like it'll fit like you know a4 sheets of a4 reams of paper like it'll fit like six reams of paper d- exactly between the <laughs> the like the the wheel arches or something like that oh, and like well, the the standardized dream size. right there <laughs> well yeah it's um it's designed for companies uh to you know as, a, as an office car sort of thing so i i, I put that out turns out it's the standard taxi in jamaica the second, no the little second hand ones. Yeah, all the taxis are in Jamaica are pro boxes. And um, somebody wrote in Japanese, like it, it has the nickname, the Shachiku no Kanoke, which means the, the salary man's coffin. Because, like, you, every time you see him, they're like, you know, it's like, a, it's like a company rep car. They're just dead driving. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. And it turns out in, uh, I think in like Kenya or like one of those, not Kenya, like a country like that. Uh, they use it to transport drugs, like that that chewable cut or whatever it's called. Like it's like a chewable mm. leaf. Yeah. Uh, and they they have to like cut it and deliver it within a certain amount of time. It goes or it goes off. So apparently, the, the someone says, "Oh yeah, in my country they call these cars problem boxes because the guys driving them are just insane because they go <laughs> flat out everywhere carrying you know a lot of weight." And apparently, it's popular with like you know thieves. <laughs> you know, because it, it can carry a lot of stuff and it's fast. So you start to learn all this cool stuff, which you can then like inject back into the into the the content. Yeah, and you attract people too who vibe with what you do. And uh, some of the best uh, you know things I've done with people are like people who are not what I do, you know, who d- aren't doing exactly what I do, who do something like similar but different, and you can sort of do some cool stuff with them, and it, it just makes everything better. It makes the content more interesting because you you start it, you get this huge, uh, wide section of things to work with, and you can just narrow it down into one little story and make it interesting for people. Yeah, yeah. a lot of it's through chance too. Like the like the the dodgy band thing. Like I just saw a, it was at Ebisu during a Matsuri, and I saw it there. I was like, oh, what's this? And <clears throat> and someone said like, oh, it's that guy there. He owns it. Like he's a former uh, Grand Prix like grand champion, like a bike, the 500 CC. Yeah. The guy, the, the original Dodger van guys, like a, a, like a, everybody in the, in the motorcycle world knows who he is. No way. In Japan anyway. Yeah. So I went, up talk- I'm getting into this. Yeah, well, I, I went up and talked to him. I was like, this is cool. Like this, uh, this is a really cool sort of style, man. I like it. And he's like, oh yeah, we, you know, we, you should come out and have a look at him. I'm like, oh, okay. And, you know, I, f- I sort of looked up online, like, oh, this is a thing. So I, I went out there and I started to learn about it. Like, you know, some people are just into it because it's like a, they just like the car. Some people like it because, you know, it's a, it was a alternative form of motorcycle transport, like compared to like the high aces that everyone else uses, just kind of cool. And then they go, Oh, we'll race them. And, and you just start to learn more and more stuff. And then you just got to filter that down into a little package and make a video about it, which sort of just goes back to what I used to do in magazines anyway. So yeah. Man, that's so cool. That's crazy. Just just by chance being at the track and like seeing one thing, and it's not even yeah. just like a oh, you have to see this. It's so weird. Like it was just like oh yeah, they just do that. That's not weird at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that's the thing too. Like uh, sometimes 
when you you sort of ask someone about something you think is really cool and they're like why are you interested in this like <laughs> no I, no one else is so, no this is really cool tell me about it like, yeah yeah they they do get that attitude too it's like oh it's nothing special it's like no it is it's, it's tell me about it yeah and then then they open up and you get this big floodgate of stuff like where they tell you everything about it yeah yeah i feel like <laughs> excuse me i feel like a lot of the stuff that you find too is like i don't know is it different in japan where like the people in the subcultures aren't like hey we have the subculture like we need to get it out to everyone it's more like hey we just do this and we yeah if you find it cool yeah yeah uh one of the things i like about here is people mind their business Mm. now here's now here's the thing there's a caveat to that um People might think that, like, they'll come to Japan and, you know, people are like, oh, they're, they're kind of like, they're not really communi- communicative. Um, <laughs> you know, you don't really, no one talks to each other so much. It's, people are kind of closed, whatever. Like, but they're paying attention to everything. They notice. Mm. People will, people talk about everything. Like, they'll, they'll see you do something or like, they'll, I, like, I heard, I heard from like, uh, like I had this job a while back and there was this person that, at this job uh, who they, I don't know, they just didn't like me for some reason. I don't know why. And I heard that they had seen me somewhere in Tokyo and they told someone else who told someone else who told me that they'd seen me there and they were wondering what I was doing there. It's like, what? Huh? You, you never talk to me like here at this job. You you actively avoid me. Like if I come into a room, you leave. Why? Weird. Huh? Why are you? No- yeah, it, they they notice everything. Like if you do something, they notice. Like I mean, it, like people who've lived here too. Like they'll know. Like the um, they'll throw gar like they'll the, the whole garbage situation in Japan can be really difficult. Like like the burnable garbage, the non burnable garbage. The you put it out on the right day, the bag is right, all this sort of stuff. And like some people have stories, like more than you talk to people in Japan, the, the guarantee one person will have this story where they've thrown the garbage out. And then like 20 minutes later, there'll be a knock on the door. And it's like a, a, an old lady who lives in the area going, this is wrong. You, you can't put this garbage in here. And it's like, how did you know it's my garbage? How did you know where I live? I've never seen you before. Like they're very uh, like that. Uh, so even so as far as the the like that sort of car culture thing goes they notice they just don't say anything mm-hmm. and because they know that everyone just sort of pay they know that everyone's looking anyway but nobody sort of goes up and sort of initiates huh. uh and let you know and, and and there's there's sort of an attitude of i don't bother you you don't bother me like you just don't be the word is mewaku like a bother um if you don't sort of if you're just being cool then it's cool no matter what you're doing, like you can go out. With, uh, <laughs> there's this famous guy. Like you see him on on like people take photos of me a lot. There's this. I don't. Know, he might be a bit weird in the head or something, but he wears like a like a tutu, and he rides around on trains. Yeah, like this sort of balding middle aged guy, but he wears like a tutu. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, people just take photos of him because he's kind of weird. But I mean, I've seen him IRL too, and I sort of like, oh, it's that guy. Apparently, he's famous, but no one bothers him because he doesn't bother anybody. It's kind of like that. Whereas if that was a picture, but yeah. (laughs) Um, So one noticeable difference is, for example, like if you see like in Australia or America, I guess overseas, where uh, if you have like a group of people who ride motorcycles, right? It's all the Harley guys are together. The sports bike guys are together. Like they're all very clicky and that whereas when he when you see a group of guys in car uh motorcycles riding in japan it's like there's a guy on a bmw there's a guy on a harley there's a guy on like a virago there's a they're all like a, a big scooter they all kind of they don't really care it's like if you're not really causing a problem no one really cares hmm. yeah it's good in that way where yeah as long as you're not causing a problem like i've, <laughs> I've had people yell at me for my loud exhaust uh this guy yeah Oh, I, I put this straight pipe on my JZX one time, street car. It was like, oh, this is way too loud. I've got to change this back. And before I had a chance to change it back, there were like two people would actually yell at me. <laughs> They'd yell at Udasai. Like there was like, you're too noisy. <laughs> one guy I kind of got back in his face because I was kind of pissed off. I, I, I stopped, put it in reverse, and I backed up. 
I was like, you say something, say it, say it again. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but yeah, I was, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Have you, uh, they just do it. And yeah, the, the idea is if you don't cause a problem, then you can just sort of do whatever you want. Really? Yeah. Have you, have you had any, like, I don't know, have you had any like disagreements with like groups or any, anyone over there yet? That's. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, so <laughs> should I tell this story? I went to, uh, a drift comp, I think it was a drift muscle at, uh, when that existed at, um, uh, it was a uh, Nihonkai Maze circuit, like all the way over in Niigata. So I went over there, and this is in the J6, J6100. And I, even, back that, at that point, I was like, I was all right at drifting, but I mean, everyone who was at that comp was really good. I was like, uh, probably not going not gonna to qualify even, but whatever, I'm here, so I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do it. And we were in practice, a practice session, and um, the way the, 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 the course worked was uh, to drive into the pits from the track with the layout it was, on the main sweeper, there was like a short access road, which was like a shortcut into the, like the outside of the track where the pits were. Because normally the pits was on the infield, but uh, the pits on the outside of the track is bigger. So you just, you just come around and then just duck off onto the left, like on, the, on this big, long right sweeper. So normally what you do is you'd queue up and then the cars in front of you would go and then you'd go behind them and just pull off behind them. And I was, I was lined up behind these three guys. No, there were two guys in front of me and then me. And I thought, oh, good. I can, I'll, I'll follow these guys, try and follow these guys and try and learn the line a bit better because I didn't know the track very well. And this car pulled around all three of us. And uh, as the lead car pulls off, he pulls off as well. And I thought, Oh, he jumped the queue. Oh, okay, well, I don't know. Maybe he's mates with the guy in front and they're trying to practice together or something, whatever. And the car in front was just driving kind of fast, but he was driving. And the two cars in front of me started drifting. I was like, okay, so I started drifting too. And at the last second, the lead car slams on the brakes and pulls off the track right as the, we're all like just on the flick, like at full noise. And the lead car, like four wheel locks up. The guy behind him kind of, you know, locks up too. I'm like, oh shit. I was far back enough. I was like, oh God, what the fuck did that guy just do? And I got really hot about it. So I went and pulled back off. And there were two cars there. They were both like red 180SXs. And I didn't know. If I'd have known, I wouldn't have said anything. But I went and parked and I came back and my Japanese is still like, okay. I said, who drove, who drove this car? And the guy next to him was like, oh, that guy there. I said, do you know what, what, what indicators are? Because like, he didn't even indicate. He didn't do anything. I was like, why did you overtake two of us to pull off? And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, you nearly caused an accident just now. You just pulled off the track in front of it. You jumped the, you jumped the queue and pulled off in front of it while the three of us were drifting. What, like, what the fuck are you doing? Why did you do that? And he's like, the fuck are you talking to me like that for? And he got he got really back up at me. Turns out he was the boss of GP Sports, and he was the uh, like the low and that's his like local track. He's like the local boss. I didn't know. I didn't know what he looked like. Oh, shit. Um, and this is in front of everybody, so <laughs> everyone's looking. Here's a, here's the 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 foreigner having a having like a shouting fight with oh, with um, the boss of GP Sports. I'm like, and he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? What, 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 you, is this your first time here? I'm like, yeah, it's my first time here, but I, I've never seen anyone do anything like that before. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but I was like, yeah, it's my first, I'll try and simplify it because my Japanese wasn't that good. I was like, yeah, it's my first time here, but why did you do that? Nobody, do, I, I drive at Nico, but nobody does that there. Like nobody jumps the start. Why did you do that? He's like, well, you don't fucking know the local rules. Like, what the fuck are you coming here talking to me fucking like that? For fucking like he gets all really pissed off. I'm like, look, look, man. Like, and, and he cares. Like, it's, you know, I drive here all the time. Like, that's the way we do things here. I was like, well, mate. I was like, well, today is not your track day. Today is a competition. And today there are many people from, you know, who are not local and they don't know those rules. So, you're a local driver, right? Well, you should tell us the rules or you should tell us these things because I was at the driver's meeting and nobody told, nobody said that. Nobody said anything. How am I supposed, you know, I don't know that. 
And he's like, well, you don't know. I was like, okay, mate, look, whatever. And I just walked off. And I was like, God, fucking hell, that guy was a dickhead. And I go back up to my pits. And about five minutes later, someone comes running up to me, goes, Alexi, did you just have a fight with Komagata? I'm like, who? What, the guy? I mean, yeah, I, I, I had a go at the guy for, for pulling off the, the track, like in front of three of us while we were, you know. And they're like, uh, okay. And they ran back off. And they came back about another five minutes later, sort of going, uh, you're not wrong. Like, because they, they went back to make sure that our stories were straight, like what I was annoyed about, what was it, it was all okay. And they came back and said, like, you weren't wrong. You just kind of went about it the wrong way. And I'm like, well, fucking this guy is just, he's, what, what, I mean, what, if I did that, what, people get mad at me, what, what's the problem? He's like, yeah, well, he's like, he's the boss of GP sports and everyone, like, everyone sucks up to him because he's like, you know, they all want to be sponsored and all this sort of stuff. I'm like, well, I don't give a fuck about who he is. I mean, it's not his track day. It's a comp. We're all from Tokyo, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. So the rest of the day could have just sort of went like, wait, I just, I didn't go back. I was, I was parked like in a different area. I was like, oh, fuck it. I, I, I crashed in qualifying as well. I didn't do very well. So oh, it was man. a bit of a, a bit of an L day overall. I mean, then get this <laughs> about two weeks later, I was at Nico and Daigo walks up to me. He goes, Alexi, did you have a fight with Komagata? I'm like, yeah. He's like, and just walked off. Like, <laughs> apparently, apparently a lot of people didn't like him. And they and they thought this is the story I heard later. A lot of people thought he was a, like a one of these sort of like I'm the best guys. And um, a lot of people thought it was hilarious that I stood up to him. Mm. Yeah. Well, so that was sort of the one the one and only time I did that because I I learned after because I was still reason I was only like a, a couple of years in. And I thought like, okay, maybe next time I should be a bit more like uh, uh, you know, maybe not go in. You know, not going half cocked, and <laughs> but I mean, luckily for me, yeah. According to everyone, I was I was in the right, but diplomatically wasn't the best thing. But I didn't care anyway. He's not he's not at there. He's not there anymore. So, and the new owner of GP Sports is a is a pretty cool guy. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, we all, we all have run-ins. Like, yeah, that's probably the only. Well, I mean, that was my lesson. Uh, to uh, step back and just figure out the situation first. Yeah, but um, I don't think I've ever told that story before. Not, nice. not like on a, on a podcast or anything. But yeah, there you exclusive. go. Exclusive. The exclusive. I don't know. It, yeah, I mean, never really had an issue with anyone else. I mean, everyone else is pretty is pretty cool generally. You, you yeah. get there's some yeah there's some guys here who are kind of like they think they're good and they want to be like tough guys and stuff like that and it's like everyone just kind of like yeah yeah just sort of humors them and oh yeah there was a situation once where uh, in Australia at a world time attack there was a Japanese guy over there and um <laughs> okay so here's here's a, a a lesson we can all learn from this is um if you go somewhere where you're not local like figure out how it works before you get mad <laughs> i think is a good rule because this is like an opposite of that uh there's a thing called world time attack in australia and they have a drifting competition usually on it and a japanese guy came over and he um yeah he had a good car i mean he was i guess he was a good driver um and i was i think i was one of the judges for it i think and on the first run that he had with a local australian driver so when you go over the finish line in Australia, you go over the finish line and you kind of keep it pinned over the finish line, right? And then kind of back off after that. In, in Japan, it's like the finish line is like that's where you slow down. So what this guy did was he led the first run. He backed off right, before, right after the finish line. The guy behind him was still full on it and hit him and pushed him off into the gravel trap. Now, the hit didn't cause much damage, but when he went off, he went into like deep gravel and he bent his tie rod. He wasn't able to get it repaired in time for the for the next battle, so he got knocked out. And he was back in the in the like this undercover pit area, like kicking his car and screaming and cussing and being like, what the fuck, man, that's not my it's his, you know, he ran into me, it's his fault, and this sort of stuff. And I, I kind of went up and like, what's like, what's the issue? And he's like, you know, it's, it's pleading his case, like that that's bullshit. I got knocked out. Why? Blah, blah, blah. 
And um, I, the guy came up to apologize, the Australian guy. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, man, I ran into you. And, he, and the Japanese guy grabbed him by the collar. No way. Which is not what you do. Like this, this, this guy thought he was a bit tough. Like you don't, t- you don't put hands on people, especially in Australia. You know, anywhere, really. You put, you put your hands on someone, on anyone in any capacity, like, okay. And, um, and then like the guy's dad, he was only a young guy and his dad jumps, he goes, whoa, and everyone's like, oh, and I, I jump in like, whoa, fucking no, stop. And the, he go, I, I was like to the, to the Australian guy, I was like, just, just, just leave. And I said, this guy, what the fuck are you doing, man? He's like, well, it's not, not, not a thing to apologize for. I was like, okay, all right, dude. And he's all pissed off. And it's funny because, again, why is Daigo always involved in these stories? Daigo uh, actually, I think, ended up winning that comp. And he was standing over in the corner with, I think, with Robbie Nishida, who was, like, um, translating for him, just standing there sort of just watching this scene, just, like, just quietly. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, that's another sort of story where – so I think a a good – and this is sort of, yeah, what I try and do – if I go somewhere new is just like figure out how it all works before you jump in and uh, you know, f- figure out all the, f- figuring out all the relationships and things like that might be a good idea first. Um, yeah. I think that's good advice. And how people do things. Like where, n- Nowadays when I go somewhere new, I, I'll, if there's someone who I know who's local, like I'll collar them and tell me like, tell me like, tell me everything about, like where do people crash all the time and what, like what goes wrong and things like that. Just so I know. Yeah. So there you go. I don't know. It's a, there you go. Some unrelated stories. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Definitely don't, uh, don't pick fights in other countries, especially when you don't know the rule. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was kind of lucky with in that situation. Uh, yeah. Cause yeah. L- everyone was like, you weren't wrong. You just did it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. The adrenaline drifting. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I get the best here sometimes. Oh yeah, for, oh, for sure. Yeah, that's it. But, uh, I've definitely, I've definitely had my, I've, I've had my few, uh, I've had a few experiences where I've gotten like hot over things that like didn't matter, but yeah, it's right. Hard yeah. Throwing cars into corners and hoping for the best most of the time. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all just like it's all stupid at the end of the day, anyway. So just like, yeah. yeah obviously, like do you know, do the best, do the best you you should do. But at the end of the day, like just, you know, take a step back. Yeah. Um, what's a? It's a learning like, process. It, like, it's all a learning process, and sort of like, what's it like getting into the commentary? I, I've I've been, I mean, I've I've definitely enjoyed your commentary for like D1, and I didn't watch any of the FD Japan stuff when you're doing mm. that, but I heard it was really good. People were like, "Yeah, Lexi like knows all the details, and you know, can explain the differences and the styles." You know, it's like very yeah. key. I, I mean, I, I've always been uh, the type of person who likes to overanalyze stuff. Is autistic a word you're allowed to say? I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe not that far, but just, but very like, yes, I, I see I mean, the difference. Between. There's a spectrum. We're all on it. That's all, you know, there is so. a spectrum. We're all on it. I, I, I believe that, um, I mean, it's like, it's like how you can learn, you can learn a lot of stuff by watching and you don't have to learn it yourself. Like again, the hard way by just watching someone else and go, Okay, that's how they do it. Okay, now I'm going to deconstruct why they did that, and I'm going to try it. And then, oh, okay, it's different to how I thought. Okay, and just even with like driving with with everything, uh, I've always been a fan of that. Is like looking at something, deconstructing it, and then applying it in my own way. And uh, again, it's it's just been from when I first started drifting. I'm watching DVDs. I'm watching like how they do that. How they do that. Why do they do that? What are they? What is that? And just becoming like that sort of detail oriented person and just enjoying the difference between styles and the advantages and disadvantages. I mean, it's like, a, I mean, I don't know just say it. It's like, I don't know, like, like Pokemon or something. It's like, th- this is stronger than that, but that is better than this. And this car is good in this way. And it's like the, this kind of driver drives like this. And uh, I've just always enjoyed that and pointing out those differences. So anyway, so going back, uh, originally, 
there's a competition at Ebisu called G1 Grand Prix, which is a G for Gaijin. And that's the competition that runs the... So here's how it originally worked. Uh, back in the day, uh, Andrew Gray from Power Vehicles at Ebisu uh, said like, oh, we should have like a little competition just for the foreigners, like right at the end of the day at, at Matsuri. Like, you know, when they, they close uh, West, uh, West Course and they just do that short run where you get those like runs with like huge trains of people. So we, um, Andy went to uh, Kumakuba and said, hey, we, we should have like a little miniature competition. Do you want to like judge it for us? And he's like, oh, that's a good idea. So we shut down the course for like the last hour and just did like this little mini competition with like, I think there were like maybe 10 people. I don't know, it, was, it wasn't that many, but there were just a few. And they gave us little prizes and stuff like that. And then Kumakuba was like, oh, okay. So the next year we started to do the actual competition on the Friday. So by the, you know, by this time, this is back when like a lot of foreigners were coming, like mm -hmm. a lot of Australians and Europeans were coming, not so many Americans back then, uh, the countries that were comfortable with left hand, with right hand drive, uh, we'd have the G1 Grand Prix. So it was like a, a chance to do a drift competition in Japan with team orange judging, you know, it was like a bit more legit. Uh, so we would do that. And I used to enter because uh, I was there anyway. And um, one year, there was a huge amount of people. We had like, I don't know, it was like 40 entries or more than that. It was a huge amount of people. And I, I said to uh, Kumakubo, I was like, hey, I'm not going to enter today. Do you want me to help? Like, uh, I can help like translate, because they were like trying to sign people up. Like, do you want me to help? So I, I helped them out and I thought, I'll, I'll get on the mic and do the announcing. Okay, group A, okay, these drivers, please head out now and just, just to help out. And at the end of the day, Kumakuba gave me a, an envelope. I said, what's this? He goes, that's your pay. You work today. It's like, oh, cool, okay. And then oh, the next cool. day, I, like, I took the envelope, took the money out and like, gave it to the front gate to enter, <laughs> uh, to enter you know, Matsuri. I was like, oh, okay, I just got a free Matsuri out of that. That's cool. And I, so I thought, okay, I'll keep doing this because I could see it was like, it was helping, you know, and and you know, a Andy was working. That Andy would help would help too. And you know, it was it was more fun. It was just make, it was making it more enjoyable. And I was like, well, you know, I'm 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 here. Any I can come here any day of the week. Like I don't need to drift today as well. Just, I could do competitions at the time. I'll help out. And I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> so I'd do this, and I'd get on the mic, and eventually I started just doing little commentary and stuff like that, and whatever. And then um, when they started to do. Uh, they did FD Japan. Uh, the guy who runs it, I think, said to Andy, like, do you know anyone who can, local who can do English commentary? And he said, oh, Alexi does the one for Ebisu. You should talk to him. I was like, okay. So I went there and they said, do you want to um, do the commentary with uh, Ryan? I think it was at first. And I was like, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it's, just a, it's a job. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went and did that for a while. And, um, and at the same time, uh, Ebisu, uh, sorry, uh, D1 Grand Prix got in contact with me as well. And they had a, it was, it was a round, they did it, uh, a diver. And it was sponsored by Monster. And I think they wanted, like Monster wanted a, an English live stream as well. Mm. And I guess it's like uh, we'll just talk to Alexi because I, 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 you know, I knew I knew a lot of the staff because I used to take I used to go to D1 Grand Prix and take photos, so I, you know, I'd go in the press area to sign up and I, I, I sort of knew the staff, and they said, "Do you want to do it as well?" I was like, "Um, yeah, why not? Cool." So I did it, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, I, I like I know all the drivers, I know everything, I know the history. It's like it was easy, whatever." And I did that, and then eventually I got fired from the FD one. And I just kept doing the D1 one as well. And I've been doing that since then. And it's like, I don't know, it, they, I think they're just doing it for the sake of doing it. And um, like, I'm, a, I'm a pretty easy person to work with, I think, in, from their perspective, because they, they just provide like a desk and, a, and like a monitor yeah, and a place to plug in my headphones. And I just, they just tell me, be there at nine o'clock. Like, okay. So I, I'll, you know, I'll drive there myself, or whatever, and I do it, and then I just go home, and they book the hotel and stuff like that. So, yeah, I've made it like easy for them. So it's, I've just sort of kept doing it, and 
it's led to a few times where I've really enjoyed the fact that I've um, I've actually predicted exactly what would happen in a run. Mm. Where it's it's happened twice so far, where I was like, I think one of them, the best one was it was around at Autopolis, and it was Awayo versus. And I'm sort of talking myself up here. It was Awayo versus uh, Suenaga, and I said like, okay. Here's what I reckon is going to happen, like knowing these two drivers. So Suinaga is going to intentionally get a two-point penalty by running too shallow. Um, but by doing that, because uh, Oeo's car has more power and more grip than here mid-corner. So what he's going to do is he's going to try and block uh, Oeo mid-corner and then get away from him and uh, prevent him from getting good proximity points. Uh, it was something like that. And it happened exactly as I predicted it. And I was like, yes, like the, this is awesome. Like the, the feeling of that. And also the same thing happened once at, at, at ABC Circuit where it was two drivers. I said, okay, this driver has a history of doing this, but and this driver has a history of doing this too. It's probably going to end up like they're going to run wide. Like the, the lead driver is going to get psyched out. They're going to run wide. Chase car is going to come in and he's going to just stick on his tail the whole way. And it worked out exactly how I called it. Like I, I called it how it happened. I was like, yeah, this is, this is cool. Like a sort of a validation of like, being so observant all the time and i have to be diplomatic here and um i, I think that that could be more i mean look i'm not a professional announcer like i i don't know my voice is like it's deep and sexy but it's not really a great <laughs> announcer's voice because i can't really get that <laughs> hype because i lose my voice uh, if I could somehow train to be better as an announcer, I think I'd be able to do it a lot better. But what I think is missing right now is that kind of thing where it's that, that extra level of, you know, engagement on top where there's like, okay, here's another run. Okay. He's really close. Cool. Okay. That guy won. It's, it gets boring. Like you got to inject some sort of, like, don't talk about like stuff that doesn't matter. Like, oh, they, you know, oh, he's okay. I gotta, I gotta cut myself off. Just where it's more that okay, these guys went head to head last round, and he lost, and then yeah. so this is like revenge. Yeah, like yeah. Re, okay, we got a chance for revenge now. Or like when they run like two rounds in a row, like at the same venue, like they run seven and eight. Okay, yeah, we had this exactly the format yesterday. So yeah, looking at the at the at the battle tree. Okay, so this guy can beat this guy, and if he wins, it might mean we have these two guys running together, and just all that sort of stuff. Where it's like that's, that's what that this one. Yeah, and I I I want I want to spend more time on, um, you know, r making more of like a, a reference for myself. Like I have a pretty good reference, like from previous like battle trees and stuff like that. But more yeah. of a like. Yeah. When okay, it's this guy versus this guy. Okay, so two years ago, here's some statistics, and you know they had a crash or something. But his car's different now. Well, just I don't know, just to make it more more interesting. Because I mean, I mean I'm, look, I'm with look the WWF yeah, has that a that huge that. story in the. It's not just wrestling, you know. Yeah, there's yeah. something to it. It's you know, it, 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 that's there needs to be more of that. And it's, like, it's I don't think I don't think I survived been, into F1. I mean, it exactly. Made it, it yeah. made it drama. And that's what people want. They want to be like these. These two guys don't like each other. And it's not even manufactured. Grudge like it's real. You yeah, just need to point exactly. it out. And I, I, I'm, I need to. I want to make more of an effort. Like I, I, I to my standard, I don't do it very well at all. It's a lot I of it's on the do, fly. I think you do better than. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I would. Yeah. Um. I would like to do I'd, better at it. <laughs> I'd rather listen uh -huh. to your commentary than. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Ryan, Ryan said for I sure. I, I can say it. I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't say that. I no, didn't say didn't. anything. I didn't no, say anything. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think, he, you knowing like the drivers, their skill, their special, you know, their certain techniques. Being a driver yourself is like really key, right? Like that's that's. I don't, something know, it, I don't even. It's not even a case of. I mean, I could, I could, I don't. You don't. I don't think you need to necessarily be a driver. I mean, I think you can observe a lot of drifting and know what's going on and be able to talk like that. Like, I, I don't think you need to be a driver at all. Personally. I mean, this might, a lot of people might think like, Oh, you need to be a driver to understand. It's like, yes. And I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of the, the maybe it's true that, but see at the point we're we're not at that point yet. We're not at the point where we can have like, you know, it's like having ex NASCAR drivers doing 
you know, doing commentary, like 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 Wall Trip doing commentary or whatever. It's like he's we're not at that stage yet where where we can have drivers who can do that. Like they're either driving or they're like doing something else. Like we're not that advanced yet. Or like, mm. you know, uh ex NBA players doing commentary and stuff like that. Like we're not really yeah, there we yet. Our, we don't have our shack yet. Yeah, we don't have our shack. Exactly. Yeah. Who's gonna be Shaq? <laughs> who's gonna be the shack yeah we need the like and the and um who's the other guy who does really good commentary um he's from orlando oh what's his name and they always like they always go head they always like argue with each other and stuff like that i can't remember his name yeah like that sort of thing but i i think i do think that that is missing and it's a it's a shame that there's not more of it and i will i am going to endeavor to be better at that if i do continue to do commentary um honestly if anyone wants to get into commentary, just do commentary. <laughs> I think it's the best way of doing it. Like it, you, you do it, and then you look at how you suck, and then try and do it better. I I did have I did have a lot more respect for people doing it once I did it. I did it for Final Battle, yeah. and I did it for like a one of the like twin drift comps hmm. locally, and then another like I've I've been doing like a here and there or whatever, and it's like, oh, it's cruel. It's rough yeah being on this really being rough being uh entertaining for more or even just factual for you know <laughs> coherent <five> hours <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's impressive like learning how to talk so you don't lose your voice and just yeah. like the not saying um and uh and injecting all that sort of stuff and i have a bad habit of uh talk of not talking in chunks i'll say something okay next we have uh this guy and this guy yeah. This guy in the blue RX7, like it's oh god, I'll listen to it back. I'm oh, geez, just you string it together, dude. I mean, it is only me, <laughs> and it is ideal to have like a, a a hype man and the yeah, and and the and the the, the talker, you know, the yeah, I the, think two people, I think two the flavor, flavor, and the Chuck D sort of dynamic, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would yeah. be would be good. Yeah, or yeah. someone who can get into it, and I mean that's how when I was with FD, that's sort of how I did it. You know, I was like the, I did like the talk, like the technical stuff, and tried to get into it. I, I think, or I don't know, we kind of changed. I don't know, I can't remember. But um, yeah, uh, just if anyone likes to do commentary, just do it, and because it's it's hard to do, and um, if you can figure out how to be interesting, that's a unique skill. Honestly, I'm I'm jealous. I'm really envious of people who can do commentary well like I mean, i've worked with professional like when i've done stuff at bigger bigger events and i've worked with like professional announcers and they're like screaming at at, at normal vo volume like their normal voice is like a super loud it's like they're like a walking monster truck you know, commercial <laughs> and everything is like super like well they're 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 you know, oh, the way the, the singing skill. song or their voice sounds really, it's easy to listen to and clear. And I'm just like, wow, man, that's so cool. I'm you like, can wow, do that. You're elo eloquent. This is. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I, uh, it's all just because I've listened to myself and gone, God, I sound so stupid and just trying to make it sound better. It's a progression. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, not <laughs> easy to do. No. I'm, I would love, yeah, I would love to see you with like, someone hype for d1 because like i mean like they're yelling and then oh uh, i we i uh, mean i know i wish there was like an english version of manapi yeah yeah he's i mean i i oh, man i love manapi he's so cool I, I i do a lot like you know we were at d1 a lot together and like sometimes we're like there's been times where like you know we'll drive i'll drive the rental car back to the airport and so we have like a you know bit of while to talk and stuff like that and yeah, no, his normal voice is super low and just like just like normal like that. And he's like just sounds tired all the time. But then when he gets on the mic, he's like, Bleh. he just like comes alive on the mic. Yeah, well, I mean, oh. he used to. He originally was a um, Formula Three Thousand driver, I think, like back in the day. Interesting. So he has motorsport history, and he he did that for a little while, and just sort of like was like like a, and also ran. So then he started to do like um, magazine reporting and like actual reporting so he's oh, been doing man. it for a long time yeah man the backstories it's crazy yeah you have backstories on everyone <laughs> yeah he's a cool guy he live. he lives like out in the countryside and he's got like a 
design and printing business as well and stuff like that. We all gotta we all gotta have our day jobs. Yeah, yeah. They've all got Mom's, day jobs. Well they, he does like other things. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh it's interesting to see how it's gonna go. But um yeah, as far as the announcing goes, like I don't know if, if they if they ask me back, I'll go back. If they say they're not gonna do it, then I don't care. Like there's a, there's a million other things I can do. Yeah, uh, I I hope they bring you back. Um, what do you see? Like, I don't know. What's like kind of? Are there like any like new trends in Japanese drifting that's kind of coming up, or even is it new? Oh, uh, I don't know. I think it's kind of with with the fact that everyone's so exposed to everyone else now. It's kind of leveled out. I think. Mm. there is a lot of i mean obviously uh i i think that if drifting never got popular outside of japan like all the d1 cars would still be running on like r200s and <laughs> you know uh well i don't know maybe i mean again god and daigo again daigo is why is daigo such a a, a catalytic figure in all these stories <laughs> but i mean you know he did what he did in the usa you know he came over there and just blew it up over there but he did he did the same thing too like he built that cheetah jzx 100 and uh it was you know running on methanol with a with no intercooler and he was sitting so far back he had to look through he had to look through the back window at full angle like the 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 pass the back passenger window at full angle or the driver's window yeah and um but th there's a lot of influence from overseas as well uh you know people right like i don't know again like People, everyone runs a quick change now. Everyone does all like like what they do in you know the USA and Europe and stuff like that. It's kind of um, reflected back. Uh, one of the things that I think affects the way they do things here are the uh, you know rules for how they build cars. Hmm. Like uh, there's a bit of a, a thing this year. I mean, you you might have seen that in uh, D1 recently. There's been a lot of drivers who used to run all the time and then stopped running. Uh, because they changed the tire rules uh, they had to have a like the tires had to have, so, so it was like a rolling resistance rule which is why you saw like some of the drivers like naoki all of a sudden on 20 inch tires on the back mm. and like some of the brands wouldn't weren't able to be used in d1 grand prix so those teams they went over to fd instead so that's why you see like a lot of the tires in uh, fd are, like a lot different to the, yeah yeah that's why like so that that sort of affects things as well um yeah there's a lot more the, there's a lot more games to run in now like you don't have it's not just like there's just one like there's like there's a lot of different options um for people to do as well so people are sort of a bit more free to do it the way like to run it the way they want to run it mm. I think as well as far as trends go I mean, like I said the other, you know, before, I went to that event yesterday with like there's a lot of young people. Like all the cars with like JZX100, Sylvia, all the bog standard cars like low on chrome wheels. It was the the classic, you know, style. Yeah. Young, he's, he's young just troublemaker style. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. Really? That's... I think maybe if you asked me that question a few years ago, I, I would have an answer for it, but I don't have an answer for that now. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, it might be the fact that there's, the, you know, the, the cars that are out now are not, I mean, there's like the GR86 and like, that's it. Yeah. So a yeah. lot of the people are building GR86s. Yeah, because I, I mean, for, for competition cars, like the, it's going to be hard to get a sponsor for an S13. It's the same in the USA. Like, you know, what is this 20 year old car? Oh, he's a brand new car on the market. Okay. Like it's a lot, easier to get sponsorship for a brand new car and that's that's kind of limited too so and uh just the fact people are getting so good yeah that you have yeah. to you have to drive to the meta like you know it, for the past several years it's been two jz s15 done like that's the the best setup now but the way it's kind of going now is i think with the with the skill of the drivers as well uh you're seeing all the, the cars like the supras and the the gr 86s and even man it's so weird the uh the the infinity that's running in d1 grand prix uh with the uh with the vr38 like the g tower engine yeah what <laughs> but it's it's set up so well 
and so balanced. And what's interesting, again, this is like what I'm talking about for like noticing differences and these sort of little, you know, balance differences and stuff like that. Uh, it's almost like, I mean, for people who play, uh, you know, video games and stuff like that, like the, it's like the the balance of, you know, it's like shotgun versus sniper rifle versus machine gun. You know, they, if you use them in, they're you know they're they're or rock paper it's a rock paper scissors thing like some cars are better in some ways um and in certain if they're driven in a certain way they're better but in some situations they're worse or uh like for example at the at the bank at abc circuit like some of the cars uh you know as you go up and they go up it wasn't like a long that's interesting thing that which came out of that too it wasn't like a long, like a, a, a long outside line bank. They didn't end up, end up running it that way. Everyone went up to the to the to the the clipping point and down. It was like almost like a just a clipping point on a bank. It wasn't like a like that. It was like a oh, like that. Yeah, it was it was quite interesting. So the way the cars handled that was some did it better, some did it worse. Um, you know, it also comes down to the the way the drivers like to drive. Uh, some like to drive a certain way. And I think what's interesting to see is with the top level drivers, um, they have retained a lot of their individuality with the way they drive and the the way their cars are set up, which makes it interesting because you don't. It's not you're going into each battle with everyone trying to build the same car, so it it, it, it they handle the same, uh, so they're easy and predictable. Like some of these cars look so badly balanced, like badly as in so off balance like they don't you know like all the like the some of this like daigo supra is it looks like it's set up so like all the weight of it is on the back but the way it drives it's like driving on the back wheels the whole time um whereas some guys like um like like that like that infinity um, by by the uh shiba tires team it's like perfectly balanced like it looks like a giant rc car which is kind of funny because the the driver who's like 24 or something learned how to drift on rc cars hmm. and then you got like you know other guys like yokoi whose car is like a perfectly you know everything is perfectly balanced and it's like a finely sharpened knife like it, it works well in every situation whereas other drivers like like naoki and daigo who are very like power like driving on the back of the car power based like yeah if they can get if they can get in that kill zone, you just you know, they, they won't they just will not lose. Yeah. But getting there is the hard part. Whereas some guys are like the cars are a bit more balanced, but then they get a better average result. So yeah, the the it's it's sort of like how it was, how it always used to be, but just like cranked up everything yeah. now. So nothing new, I don't think. There's nothing really new. It's just um the how it used to be just like amplified even more. Yeah, I think it's just like all information coming from all these places and yeah like different techniques and you're seeing this person do that and it's just like what uh what do you think was like one of the biggest things you learned driving wise that was like pivotal for you progressing uh okay this is an interesting thing so uh that's that's difficult to answer that everyone's different. Like everyone has a different situation. Uh, everyone learned how to drift differently. Everyone has a, here's a big one. Everyone has a different financial situation, right? Very true. Uh, right. Everyone has a different, like just where you are, what, what, what you have access to all that sort of stuff. Um, and the way you end up driving sort of comes out of that i think also just your personality and your and your temperament and your mindset and everything it just comes out of that um i always liked being very consistent when i was driving uh like the, one of my one of my friends back in australia once said oh alexi i can tell it's you driving without even like if i'm facing the other way and you're out on the track i can hear, hear you. it's you because your, your your throttle control is very like just precise and like constant like you're not like revving it or anything it's just like like it's like very clean and nice and that's just i always enjoyed that like i i didn't like uh being super hectic and spitting out and crashing Wah! whereas this guy's like that though um 
So I would always just be very consistent and, and, you know, I'm a bit too close to the edge now. I'll just back it off a bit because my situation was always like, I, I, mean, I didn't have that much cash. I thought, well, if I could, if I could, if I crash now, I'm going to be out for this long. <clears throat> if I don't crash, I can get triple the practice. Therefore I'm going to get better. That was my sort of logic. Like as a result of that, I'm really good at rain drifting. I'll, I'll say that. I, <laughs> I think oh, I'm man. really good at rain drifting. Because I would go up to Ebisu, like I'd look at the at the weather report. Like this is back before I got married, and I was just like, I could just do whatever I wanted. And um, <laughs> and uh, I'd look at the weather report, and it's like, oh, it's going to rain all day tomorrow. We'll, let, let's go to Ebisu. <clears throat> Sorry. So I'd go and um, just pra- I'd do like 200 laps of Minami in the wet, just trying to get the same line again and again, just consistent, 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 consistent. I mean, and just being I'll, consistent. And I'll um, do it. Yeah, and just be, yeah, being consistent. Uh, I, I was sort of that way for the longest time. Then I kind of realized that watching myself driving wasn't that exciting. Like it's nice because like my my idols were always like Taniguchi and you know Kazama and guys like that who are all like the, the that sort of style of driving. Whereas, you know, there's all these other guys like Naoki and Haraguchi, it's all like crazy, insane stuff. I just, I just never really like vibe with that. I was like, ah, that's cool, but uh, I don't know if I can do that. And then one day, uh, I mean, it wasn't really one day, I guess, but then I just sort of went through an, an evolution where I'm like, no, wait a minute. I need to put myself in like stupid, crazy situations Be, because. Otherwise, I'm just never going to learn. It kind of got to the, I got to the end of that journey where it's like, okay, now I'm super consistent. Now what? It, you're really, you're <laughs> kind of boring. And this is sort of the journey I'm on, I'm on now is to try and get that, that uh, exciting edge, I think. And I'm not doing a good job of it because I've got this like standard, pretty boring S15 right now. And I watched, the, I watched some of the video of me yesterday uh, driving. I'm like, from the Sampatsu competition. And I'm like, wow, I, I hit, I hit the course like white line to white line and it was super clean. But some of the other guys are like, you know, huge angle and lifting wheels and stuff like, yeah, I got to do that more. So I'm trying to sort of unlearn that. Um, at this, but here, but here's the thing from being consistent, uh, I can very easily spot where I'm doing wrong mm. because when it's not when I do something that's not right, I'm like, okay, no, no, that's not working. Okay, now now do it like this, and the feedback loop is a lot faster. Mm. Yeah, so I don't know. That's the problem is just being too analytical about it from the beginning has not been to my benefit. Whereas, I, and I look at some of the other guys here who was like, yeah, if I just drive like an absolute maniac, sometimes uh, I'll get a lot better, a lot faster. Yeah, is a yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, that, I'm definitely that, that, that line of thought makes sense. I, guess, I, I, get you, I get what you're saying. I mean, it, yeah, I'm. I'm not. Consistency is not something I'm good at. Right. <laughs> so, like, that's something that I I actually I'm like working on now. I'm like, all right, right. I got I, I got uh, where I wanted to be with certain things, but then I'm like, right. I can't I can't do that consistently. I'm mm. too one way or the other. It's like it's like. Yeah, so, I almost hate the fact I'm like now I'm. Oh, this why does this sound so bad? I don't like the fact I'm too. I, I'm like that now because it's like kind of boring. Mm, uh, I want I to be it. more like more on the ragged edge because yeah, like I see some of the guys here are like you don't have anything between your ears. You're just nuts. <laughs> but then the problem with that is they crash a lot, and if you're not in the situation where you can like crash and like not just be back out there really soon. I don't know. I don't know. I should, I don't know. I should be further along than where I am, but I don't know. I've just, I've spent the past few years sort of trying to take care of like a lot of other stuff in my life. Cause I'm 42 now, by the way. <laughs> so there's a lot of other like life stuff that's sort of getting in the way, but, um, Hey man, if I'm still drifting at 42, I will be very happy. Well, that, that's the thing. It's still not boring. I, I, I say this sometimes like my, um, my father was a skydiver back in the day like in the like in the 1970s and 80s 
And um, I, was, I was talking about this to someone yesterday, the track the guy. Uh, like he'd do crazy stuff. Like he'd travel around Southeast Asia and um, he'd, he'd just go to like an Indonesian army base and ask them when, when they're next sending their paratroopers up and just give them some, slip them some money and he'd just go like get a free, like these free rides in military yeah i got a photo of him like in a in an indonesian like um uh c47 is, is it like the, the nice. dakota and he's sitting down the back this long-haired hippie with glasses and there's all these like you know uh indonesian paratroopers with their berets on. <laughs> like, like he'd do he just go he'd skydive he's got like a, a scar in his nose from where he smacked his face into his stopwatch and all this sort of stuff and yeah, all these crazy stories and photos and stuff. I was like, damn, that's cool. And I asked him one time, I said, why did you quit skydiving? Uh, like, did you have like a scare or something or what? And you get, cause I was trying to think like, am I going to quit cars? Like, what am I, how, what should I do? Like, should I, should I try and like, okay, this is going to be my, my last year drifting and I'll, you know, just go all out and then quit or something like that. Cause that's the thing that people here in Japan do is like, uh, they got like young guys will drift for like two years. And when they turn 20, they just quit and they like enter the workforce. It's kind of sort of a, a thing where like bosses Oku will have a graduation when they took, cause when you turn 20, you're an adult. So you can be charged with adult crimes. Wow. Yeah. So they'll stop being like hooligans and like graduate into like either just I don't know, whatever. But yeah, it, it's sort of a, a culture thing here. Uh, I mean, I'm still doing it. So I thought like, well, if I ever quit it, like what should I do? So I said, did, why did you quit skydiving? He said, I don't know. I just went to the drop zone one time, did like four or five jumps, went to the pub, had a beer, drove home and thought, yeah, that'll do. And he just sold his rig and quit. Huh. I thought, why? I, don't know, I thought I'd, that was enough. So I thought, okay, well, if I ever have that feeling like, yeah, that's enough, I'll, I'll quit. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, though, because it's just so much fun. It is. It is. It really is. I, I'm glad that I've, I've found that because, I mean, I've tried like surfing and snowboarding and other things like that. And I, it's like it's fun to do, but it's like, yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. Like, that's enough. But drifting's like that. And uh, it's, I mean, it's been a, it's been a fun pro- process to get better i mean i think it's just like a it's like a a, another video game analogy it's like a skill tree where you kind of get better at what you're interested in or what you are forced to be better at Mm -hmm. and i think the consistency thing also comes from street drifting because you have to be consistent you you can't be uh i I was at abc one time i was looking down on the front straight uh on minami and there was this guy I know uh, who was in his A86 and he was smashing it. He did like 30 laps in a row just again and again and again and again. Every time he was that far off the wall, every time. And I was standing up there just watching this. Like, Damn, he's, wow, I can't even imagine doing that. This is a long time ago. And um, I said to someone, like one of the group I was with, like, man, he's just, so good at getting so close to the wall every time he goes yeah he's a he's a he's a saitama mountain drifter Mm. and what's that mean because the the ones in saitama are super narrow uh so you you have to be super consistent every time i was like actually okay yeah 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 yeah. i mean i don't know that yeah just being consistent but i mean see that's i'm i've been thinking like I never did comps because I, I, I always felt, you know, I don't know, this is a, a rationalization or an excuse or something like that. But I never, I never felt the same, even when you win, like it's fun then, but I never felt the, the, the same amount of excitement. Like I get more, I, I would leave a track day with a greater sense of satisfaction than winning a trophy. Hmm. That's just me. I don't know. Maybe I'm not very competitive or I don't know, whatever. I just, uh, whatever it's like okay i can go to track day and thrash all day and have fun and go home and then do it again or i can go to a track day and um you know break something right before qualifying and then have to go home and i've just spent like all this money and why i don't want to i don't want to do that i want to do this um i think that's why i think that's why comps don't always i mean like over here like competitions it's like hard to get them 
full like you know it's hard to get like a, a number of people who want to do that but the people who do <laughs> it do that often it's like yeah. it's just different it's a totally different mindset it is like, it is i mean gotta, I, you know it's like people show up and they take it seriously and they have crews and spotters and it's like you know i not something that i'm familiar like you know, i don't want to have to yeah well I, uh, i'm gonna show up and change my own tires anyway so <laughs> <laughs> well the, the the thing is though like being consistent is probably the best thing that's going to get you a win so right uh i don't know i don't know i don't know it yeah i think the the best thing about that though would be the fact you get to drive with people in that like that dog fight situation i have i have found that it's I, i've learned things from that where you're forced you're like oh like i'm gonna lose if yeah I right if i don't like really apply pressure you know because it's like people you haven't driven with before and you're like like you know typically if it was just a fun day you wouldn't be like you know trying to put tire marks on their door yeah, you know? yeah. like it's yeah. someone you've never driven with but it's like there's there's something to that there definitely is uh i, I will be exploring that uh in in the future because i mean that is a, a fairly big area of um you know drifting which i haven't really covered and i'd, just, I'd like to see if uh, if that could could be interesting or not because uh you know it it, it and it, until now too it's been hard to justify doing that because it's like okay well i can just go to a, a track day and shoot a video and it costs like this much money to make and it makes this much money back okay or yeah you know, this is more of a guaranteed return whereas uh yeah covering co drifting competition videos like you look at other people who do who do it and it's like they're not really that they don't really do that well generally yeah and i can't imagine unless you win <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine also like trying to film and yeah, because you know, because like with a competition, there's like strategy and you gotta be pay attention to more things and it's like okay, this person's like you know mm. wins qualifying, you know it's like there's a there's a lot more going on. It's definitely a lot more chaotic, I would say than a yeah, and like yeah. for most of us, this is just like an escape. We don't want to add st stress to. <laughs> the thing yeah, right? doing yeah. to get away from stress yeah yeah well i mean, I, I do i do enjoy and that's the thing too is like I'll, I'll go to d1 and i'm you know I'll, I'll go through i'll walk through the pits and like talk to a bunch of the drivers and get a bunch of information and get you know then i can okay now i can relay that back to people and talk about it and stuff like that so yeah i don't know where are we going with this line of conversation i don't know uh like where yeah what direction to push it in like i mean there's probably a lot of people who are starting out and drifting who obviously you know they have aspira like, i want to run in you know top level driving and and i and we we can look at that and go man you better you better start now like, yeah. there's a lot of i mean that that said though uh you know driving with guys who have done a lot of professional like competition driving is so good it's always yeah. you, you you don't have to dial it back you can always be you know on it and they'll be on you and it it, it, it is fun in that way uh yeah i think that that would be the only that's the only thing that i i think right now from okay well i've just been really i've gotten a lot better at driving you know oh man i got <laughs> i got into a, a car a while back uh, a, a a crown and it was a Nico and Koguchi got in the seat with me. Like he got in the passenger seat. I was like, Ooh, and I'm like, uh, okay. I'll, um, man, uh, that's, I mean, I've look, I've still got a fanboy. I mean, yeah. I, I still, I talk to Koguchi normally. It's like, yeah, Koguchi's driving me. But, and he's like, I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm just going to, I'll do my best. He's like, nah, yeah, I know you're good. Don't worry about it. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, yeah, it's good. Take the respect and the cash. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, it, it is. It is fun to to do stuff with guys like that, and I think that that's probably the only thing I've I've missed out on so far is not uh, doing stuff at that level, um, and and just sort of more concentrating on myself. But then again, I've I've always been that kind of person where it's like I don't really I don't really care I don't care if there's if anyone's watching or it's like I, I just like to do it by myself and progress and build it up and be consistent and 
and clean and good. And I, I enjoy that style, which is kind of boring, honestly. But <laughs> I mean, I think yeah. it's cool. It's as long as you're going like a little faster every time and being, getting very personal here. Yeah, it, the 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 progression is the fun thing in yeah. in whatever way. Like, yeah, you do. Uh, so there's no, there's never been like one pivotal pivotal moment. Uh, it's it's just like a, a slow progression of like okay i'm I'm good at this now i'm good at this now i'm oh i, I feel and you, you spot where you're weak or what you'd like to get better at um i i really believe that you should force yourself to try different things uh when you when you're drifting and not be afraid to take a step back every now and again and suck at something <laughs> Like to the people, if anyone's you know watching this who drifts regularly, it's like be, you know, do try, see if you can actually do like really good figure eights around two uh, pylons. Yeah, I honestly, man, I think there's some people out. Here's the thing too. Uh, I reckon there's some. There'd be some people out there who like everyone reckons is good who can't do like good like you know tight then open then tight or the you know fig, like the figure eight drills. And at the same time, there's probably some drivers out there who nobody really pays a whole lot of attention to, like pro drivers. Be really good at who those. could, yeah, who could absolutely nail it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy that. Actually, I did this a, a couple of weeks ago where I taught. This is the, sort of the first time I did it. I taught somebody to drift from like zero Whoa. to to doing a like a, a handbrake turn and then connect a like a U turn, like a, a U turn drift, basically. Yeah, we started from like uh, it was actually a, it was a, a a live streamer on um, on Twitch, a guy called Jake and no, Bake. It's like no, a wait. sort of a, a travel live streamer. We, we we did this whole thing live. We started like t- we did it from like ten until three p.m. and I got him uh, to. It was really cool. Uh, it was it was cool. enjoyable to see that and um, uh, like that's the thing too is like if you can teach someone to do something, it sort of means you have a good grasp of how to do it. Yeah. So it was uh, it, it was fun. I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't. Know. I don't really don't know. I have a uh, um, I have a huge like I said before. Like when I have like meetings with myself, I have a huge, you know, grand agenda of what to do, and it's just a, a case of putting the time and manpower and money into doing it. I can relate. I think we yeah. all relate. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. We all have those board meetings with ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking finance guy again damn it <laughs> shut up finance guy <laughs> we need to we need to buy this thing it's necessary I, I overread the finance guy a lot yeah me too yeah, yeah he's not very happy with me at all <laughs> like when i bought the i bought those work wheels for the pro box like i've i've already spent like the cost of the pro box again on the pro box and i i bought these wheels these like old school like they're called the uh, bridgestone super wrap rap mm. wheels and they look like steel wheels but they're actually like aluminium like lightweight they're meant to be like like Jim Carner wheels from like back in the day oh, that's cool. and um because i wanted to keep like the sort of the the, the stock look and they cost like a thousand bucks because they were like the best size and the best offset and they were really good condition like one of them we balanced it and it didn't need any wheel weights they were really Whoa. good condition and i bought like r triple eight like slick like semi slicks for it <laughs> And I haven't even put them on the car yet. And I bought these extra wheels for us. Like, yeah, finance guys. Like, you already have put the wheels on the car first. And then buy these. It's like, no, no, no. We got the guy from work. He's talking to, he wants to do a deal with us now. Let's do that. Let's, let's do it now. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's stupid. All right, look, everyone can relate to that. Come on. Everyone's like, oh, it's a good deal. Let's just buy that. The, you don't need to buy two gearboxes. But yeah, but they're going to go up in price. And what if we if we break one, we can replace it straight away. Just buy it now. Just do it. Okay, okay, fine. No, yeah. no it one makes listen, no, no one listens. What we to do this, is no one we're, we're to this disagrees. No, yeah, <laughs> no. We're, yeah. Everyone else is like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> buy yeah, the other set of wheels. No, it never changes. Uh, Can't mm. wait. <laughs> I'm happy to know that. <laughs> or maybe I'm not. I don't know. I think we'll, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, it's fun life. Good oh, stories. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it builds up. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I I don't know what the uh, what 
everybody's goals are these days. Uh, I think it's cool that these days that, um, you know, drifting has been around enough now that there's enough sort of a, a history to it and sort of a method to it that people who are sort of getting into it now can have a bit more of a straightforward path or, um, you can have aspirations or ideas or, you know, a lot of examples to go from. I mean, I don't know what people want to do these days, honestly, but, um, you know, things getting more expensive and I don't know. It's like simultaneously more accessible and like more difficult to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think Sim is going to be like the, yeah, that just, that seems like that. I mean, there's so many people that, I mean, I, I, I would say that there's probably people more people doing sim drifting than actual drifting. I mean, maybe, oh, yeah. it's got to be at this point. It's more accessible. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, I I want to get more into doing that. Like I think one uh, a while back I went to Nico so I have a I have sort of a rig here. It's like not that great right now. Uh it's like a it's like a pretty old Fanatec, but it's 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 okay. It's good enough. Uh I'm going to be upgrading it soon for that reason because it's just good it's good training and I mean, you could you can drift. I could, you know, I've done stuff before. Like I've drifted with, you know, uh, Shinji Minoa's son and like Bucky and all that, like together and people overseas and stuff like that. It's like, oh, we can oh, just cool. drift together. It's great. Yeah. Uh, like I went to Nico Circuit and drifted all day, and I came home and like did what I had to do, and then that night I got on the sim and like tried tried to see if the like the the muscles were the same and everything was the same. It's like it was pretty damn close. Yeah. Uh, the feeling of it was, uh, I don't know. I, I still have that disconnect. Um, yeah. But I did, if you want to talk about like, you know, light bulb moments or whatever, like that happened. I was like, oh, okay. I can, that, that thing I was screwing up today, I can sit here and like grind out like the, the feeling of it until I get it. And then I can go back and do it. And yeah, it, it's definitely worked. Like, uh, especially at Nico Circuit, because that's probably the track I drive the most. The, the entry where you don't need to uh, like pull the handbrake or kick the clutch or anything. It's like, it's all just accelerator. Like that thing where you, you, you come up, you back off the accelerator a little bit and then you know, you load the springs and then lift off and it, you know, you, you hold a lot of speed into the corner. Mm -hmm. So then you can get on the accelerator really early because you're not slowing down. Like I, that sort of that technique. Yeah. I practiced yeah, yeah, that. Yeah on the like i came back home and like okay that's what i was screwing up. okay so i'm gonna do it and i did you know again and again and again and again and, and it and it got better so i think you're right about that so if anyone out there's thinking about sim drifting then yeah for sure oh, man. there's always like there's like a lot of people around here that started on sim and then like got cars and could like tandem and that's like do you do it a lot or uh yeah i, I tried to you know try and fit it in right <laughs> yeah i know right uh i wish i was like back when i just had free time coming out of my ass i mean yeah imagine having like a sim rig and being like 16 and you just come home and Dude, I was on, jump online with the i was on homies. gran turismo with a like an analog con not, not even the analog controller like just the regular playstation <laughs> controller remember that like the the d-pad yeah. yeah trying to set up like cars in that to drift on um what is it something what is it something valley speedway or whatever it is like the mountain valley speedway or i don't know uh that one why, I, everything you I was like <laughs> uh something mountain so trial, trial mountain. mountain trial yeah, mountain yeah, yeah. I have a lot of hours on that yeah oh, yeah a man lot, yeah. a lot of hours a lot of hours on that yeah but if you had a sim rig now holy crap it's like three screens and uh, force feedback and all that sort of stuff. Wow. I mean, yeah, it's like you, that's how uh, the the hey man, like the kid from the hey man, uh, uh, Hiro. Yeah, yeah. Like, like funny, funny story about that. Uh, so the the pro box that I bought, I actually bought it from Shinji, like Shinji, you <laughs> know, hey man, Shinji, and um, he said that so Hiro, who's like. I don't know, like 12 or something, apparently doesn't know how to drive stick. He only knows how to drive the sequential. 
Because no his, his comp no car has the sequential and the, the sim has the sequential. He doesn't know how to drive a stick. And he was actually using that, the Pro Box, which is a, a, like a regular, like, you know, five speed to teach him how to drive stick. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. going to be a thing. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, I would, yeah. I would have loved to have a sim. God, if I had a sim back then, yeah, I would have never got off it. I think. Well, I had I had the PlayStation, so I never never really got off that. Grand nope. Turismo, Grand Turismo, nope. Grand Turismo Two. Yeah. So many hours. Mm. I think we all. I, that, I think that's a pretty common case between <laughs> all of us. Yeah, yeah. That was definitely first choice to slip into the PlayStation. Yeah, the the, the original one, which you uh, you scratch you know, scratch and sniff, and it smelled like like tires. Remember that? No. Yeah. Yeah, the original Gran Turismo, uh, the disc, it was scratch and sniff. And it smelled what? like it, I mean, it's, it was meant to smell like a garage. It <laughs> smelled like tires, basically. Yeah, it smelled like rubber. Whoa. That's a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. The the used market on those on eBay just went up based on that fact <laughs> right there. I wonder if they still smell. That'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think uh, that would um, it might be a, a bit of an option now. I mean, probably right now, there's probably a lot of uh, post-COVID uh, purchase, you know, sales. I've seen you know people during lockdown, people bought like sim rigs and sort of decided it wasn't for them. So it might be a good time to buy them now. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. Everybody, everybody, cash in. Yeah, trying to buy sim rig stuff during COVID was like an everything. Oh was yeah, like, right. Yeah, <laughs> my pedals broke like right in like. Like two months into COVID, I'm like uh-huh. no, I had to wait good. super long to buy it. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, man, I think we did a bunch of hours. Oh, how long have we been going for? Almost. It's two almost, o'clock. Oh, it's yeah, two o'clock man. here. Yep. I know you. <laughs> I know you have stuff to do. So <laughs> I, yeah. Oh, we all got stuff to do. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I was yeah, we did track yesterday. And, in mind just sort of relaxing today Ugh. yeah man well i mean Ugh. like I, re- I appreciate you doing this i'm glad we finally got to set this up and like i mean just the stories yeah. alone are worth it i'm excited to put this out and obviously you're a legend in this world and yeah yeah i know <laughs> look i just put out stuff that i like and i'm just glad people like it too yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you've had other people say the same thing, or probably same with you too. It's like you put stuff out. It's like, oh, you like this? <laughs> yeah, that cool. Feels good. I'm glad I'll, that you I'll, like I'll, it, and I'm glad that I can make more of it, and you'll and you'll like it too. Yeah, I like I like helping people through their day, or work day, or whatever. Or same. I mean, giving some insight that helps. Yeah. Stuff. I don't know. It's like a big part of this. We, we need oh, what, have we have we had a lot of people like doing their laundry and stuff or like yeah. while uh, listening to this uh <laughs> people are using like uh heavy heavy equipment like front loaders and oh you know, right yeah on the job yeah driving driving you know trucks 18 wheelers yeah okay all kinds of stuff man janitors yeah. someone someone's replacing fucking urinal cakes to this <laughs> Love all of them. Yeah, no, it's uh, you've you put out like fi- like fifty of these so far, like fifty one. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Oh, well, look, if we get uh, if we get some feedback from this, if there's anything people would like to hear more about or whatever, I'll I'll come back. I'll be back if you if you like. I'm sure they would. We get asked all all the time. Someone someone mm. DM me that they someone asked on your Twitch stream and you said yeah. And I was like, did you ask? And they're like, no. And I'm like, all right, I need to just Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I've I've had a few people say that before. Like, um yeah, I've been on a few been on a few podcasts here and there, but um, I've seen. It's probably the yeah, most looking... mediocre of all of them. So thank you. No, I mean I was looking forward to this because it's I could just not have to make an not have to make an effort, but <laughs> <laughs> like just, just let it flow like yeah because yeah, some other ones are like a bit more of a entertaining in- entertainment sort of thing yeah that's not yeah, yeah. you know you know what you're here for i know what i'm here yeah i know i know all right um 
Yeah, man. I really appreciate you and your time. I know we all have limited of yeah. it and you gave it to me and everybody listening. So thank you. That's all right. I mean, you go, I mean, you guys do cool stuff too. So I got to come over there. And yeah, please. And I think I do have another Texas trip lined up. I think with, um, I was meant well, to come over you. before COVID. Or, uh, yeah, Aaron. Aaron Lossie. Yeah. 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 I think I got, there's this guy, I won't say which, but there's another guy in California doing an event who wants me to come over for that too. So I got, I got to like line up a bunch of stuff. Wait, what event should I, what event should I go to? Oh, that one can get political. Ah, okay. Fair enough. Right. Um, but like, you know, like obviously Julian event- runs the Super D stuff and that that's usually pretty cool. Okay. Um, I think it might be really interesting to see what that looks like. Right. Yeah, I got in the video of it, but yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. That's all. It's it's just like it is over there. It's like you. It depends on what you want. True. Yeah. That's that's depends that's on true. What you're looking for. That's true. That's uh, that's what I say to people when they when they say to me like, "Oh, I'm gonna go to Japan. What should I go and do?" It's like, well, "What do you want to do?" Yeah. Yeah. Everything's. I mean, everything has a different style. There's like Florida and New York has their own. Like you know, like. <laughs> the whole east coast is kind of like a thing but they got their different styles in different places and then right i mean we're this place is huge so oh well i'll I'll have a look at uh i'll no i know what i'll do i'll have a look at my um my youtube stats and see like where i get the most views and then i'll try i'll Mm. I'll find like a something there and i'll go there that's probably might be a good idea that'd be cool or we'll just convince you to come to. We're in Northern California, so anytime. Oh you know, yeah, well that's that's on my list. Like yeah, that's um that whole like from like L.A. up to like San Francisco is like on my list. For yeah, sure. I'll be your tour guide. I live in the city, so. Oh cool. Okay. Oh. <laughs> we'll tell we'll, you where uh, I go. Line it up for next year. Yeah, man. Well, thank you. Bye, everybody. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for who's been listening this entire time. We appreciate you yeah and uh they all did all of them all of them every single one <laughs> even if it was in bits you had to like stop because you had to go and do something and come back <laughs> you stopped to have lunch and came back yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right all right thank you yo you made it all the way to the end of the episode you should see therapy therapists <laughs> um Makes us look good to the podcast overlords if you watch, listen to the whole thing, and of course YouTube. Um, be sure to subscribe, and like, and all that shit. Um, follow us on IG at Good as Cast. Follow the guests. Check out their links in the description. Check out the sponsors' links in the description. And uh, just want to say thank you for making it to the end of the episode. You fucking legends. <laughs>